What is going on, everybody? We're here. We're live on a, what is it, a Monday? Monday. A Monday. I'm never here on Mondays. I'm never live on Mondays. But this is a very special occasion because we had a big announcement. Not only did, you know, Warner Brothers decide to get rid of the name HBO Max because they're retarded and rename it Max, but they also made another announcement. We're here to determine whether that was retarded or not. And that is the Harry Potter reboot on Max. And so I found... Some of the biggest Harry Potter fans I know, including myself. We've got the Blabbering Collector. We'll start off with her because she's she, she's so excited. She said, <laughs> I'm so excited for this stream. What's up, Blabs? Hi, I'm excited, obviously. All right. And of, and of course, me and Gary were actually on the phone talking about this. That's how excited we were about this yep. announcement. That's what big of fucking nerds we are. Uh, <laughs> Gary from Nerd Rotic, welcome to the channel. What's up, Ryan? I'm ready to do this. I'm, I'm I am uh, uh, I'm excited about the announcement. It's a smart announcement. You know, there's a daytime YouTuber uh, who said uh, he and his uh, girl co-host who doesn't like anything JK Rowling uh, said anymore uh, recently said that this wasn't that big of a deal. This announcement that uh, it, did we really need it? This is the biggest entertainment announcement since Disney bought Star Wars. Whether we like it or not, whether it turns out good or not, doesn't matter. This is a huge entertainment announcement for television, for streaming. Uh, and it's something they had to do because guess what? Warner Brothers needs to make money now. They can't be uh, screwing around now. They could still screw it up a thousand ways, which we will talk about. Oh, yeah. Like, there's so many ways this could go wrong. Everyone's already like, oh, they, they don't even have a showrunner. They don't have anybody attached to the project, but rumors leaked that they want a cast mm -hmm. of color and all these things already We'll get into some of those things because those are all worries we have as well. But you're right, Gary. Warner Brothers has made a commitment. They're like, hey, we're $47 billion in the hole. We need to actually make money, and we're going to use all our big IPs to do that. So DC, let's reboot, get a fresh start. We're questioning whether those are some of the right decisions or not. But of course, Lord of the Rings. Hey, we're going to do more Lord of the Rings stuff and a Harry Potter. Is it too soon? You can argue yeah. that it may be a little too soon. For some people, This uh, the last one getting released in 2011 or whatever yeah, it was 2011 july 15th 2011 yeah but at the same time uh man this is a big property and i do think it's going to be massive when it comes out whether it is massive season two and onward will depend on how good season one is that but, first episode oh my gosh the well I, I think the first season people really give it a chance uh because i think that Let's just talk about it. This is the announcement. Harry Potter reboot is happening. J.K. Rowling is involved. Executive producing seems to have a lot of control over where they're taking this story and what they're going to do to maintain the integrity. And the plan right now is seven seasons, one book per season, a decade worth of commitment to this story. And obviously people are going to wonder about the cast. Who's going to play who? Who's going to play who? But what was your initial, let's go with Blabs first. What was your initial thoughts when you heard the news, saw the little video they put out with the John Williams music, with the, the Hogwarts castle? What was your initial gut feeling? I almost cried of sadness, actually, because I was like, don't touch what's not broken. And I mean, you already have Fantastic Beasts, Lee, right there. And I know it's got a lot of issues, but finish it first, right? It's, it's, you just left it hanging and we're never going to get anything back, I think. There's no, there's no talk for four and five. I'm I'm not really very positive on this right now because of like it's 2023 everything has been woke everything has been altered for the modern audience and I'm just like if you actually read the books and gave all the characters their time to shine you wouldn't actually have to adapt or change anything for the characters none of the characters had to be race swap gender swap because everybody's already in the books they're all there so I'm, I'm hesitant very hesitant. I'll be real. I got, I, I felt the opposite of you. I felt excited because recently um, with the release of Hogwarts Legacy, which I know you weren't a big fan of the story and it blabs. I, I just love getting to hang around in that world and wander around in that world for a while. Um, in the past month, I've re-listened to all the books on audiobook, which I haven't done for a couple years. And I rewatched all eight movies, the the special ones with the extra footage in them. Mm. Um, and it, all it did was remind me of how much I really, really love the books and how much of a letdown some of the movies are. Oh, yeah. And how much some of the things that they should have tackled or could have tackled, um, storylines that we missed out on, we didn't get to see in the movies. 
No, I, I 100% agree. With everything woke Hollywood, it, it's so easy for them to fuck this up six ways. Mm -hmm. But this is the right way to tell these stories, to be honest, to put mm -hmm. them on a screen in front of people. What did you I think, agree with that. Uh, well, I was on a live stream when somebody told me, and I'm like, shut up. No, so I thought it was just some screen rant BS or whatever. And uh, there I saw it on deadline. Uh, and, you know, Zaslav said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get back to Batman. We're going to get back to the Lord of the Rings. We're going to get back to the things that made us successful because Warner Brothers has been America's dumbest company. Uh, and and yeah, the Fantastic B series is definitely a great example of that. J.K. Uh, Rowling can't write scripts. Uh, I didn't like any of the movies very much, to be honest with you, even with Johnny Depp in them. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think they're, 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 they're very they, uh, too white. His hair. Look yeah, at you're, that gonna, you're gonna have the opposite complaint about this series, likely. So. <laughs> I remember yeah, like, yeah. his hair. It was like an albino. You look like a weirdo when you're supposed to be like a normal, charming dude. Anyway, go on. Uh, it's all okay. Uh, I was initially excited, but hell, I was initially excited when I heard about Second Age Lord of the Rings before I found out who was involved. So we gotta wait for who's involved. But um uh I, if JK Rowling has control over this, I think there might be like a glimmer of hope but we have to wait and see who that showrunner is now hbo knows how to make shows they know how to adapt shows uh and if they approach it like they did house of the dragon i think it could be a success absolutely uh the question is this is a 10-year commitment how long are these seasons going to be because you can't make you can't make chamber of secrets uh, the same length as Order of the Fe Order of the Phoenix. That is uh, th those books. I mean, they just get huge. That is a huge book. That's the biggest book. So uh, chapters. Yeah. So I don't know how they're going to do that, uh, but it sounds like they're going to put the money into it. But my initial reaction was actually, well, uh, I think this is Hollywood. Some parts of Hollywood turning around and doing the sure things that they need that have been like that. That idea has been out there since the end of COVID. By the way. Like, no way home. Massive success. They just put Tobey Maguire back into a Spider-Man movie. It wasn't like rocket science. Top Gun Maverick. They just made a sequel to the original and stayed pretty true to the, the original. Even a couple of movies. Like, I didn't like Avatar, but, like, it was it was Avatar. It was the same thing, damn near all the way, that it was in the same movie. And then with Mario, which I'm like, it's, you know, a kid's movie to me, but it's it's a lot more to a lot of other people is is going to hit a billion dollars here pretty soon so the answer is there and warner brothers is in a unique position of being a massive failure over the last few years and they are now forced to innovate which is usually how the free market works you start falling on your ass you are forced to innovate or you die uh and that's what's going to happen and uh but you know I, as always ryan uh, hope for the best, expect the worst. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely reasons to be very, very scared. But uh, at the same time, there, uh, there. I'm not going to lie. It's exciting, the idea that we might get some yeah. of these stories. And we'll get to some of the things that we most would want to see in this. But we got a couple other guests as well. Now, if you were to guess the one person who was going to be late to the stream, some people would have said Gary. Uh, but that was wrong. You should have gone for the diversity in this stream. Quarter black carrot. <laughs> hey, I need a time turn. A fifteen I minutes. I need. Fifteen minutes late. Quarter black carrot. Uh, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we're destroyed until we needed to do Chris Child. Yep. Um. So yeah. I'm happy to be here. Dude. I am excited to talk about Harry Potter. Not a lot of people want to talk about it. I don't know why. You know, I think it's kind of nerdy. But, you know, that's what we do here. I, I think for we dudes do. to be into it, I, 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 it almost feels like a, if you're a dude who's really into it, that could be a little weird. But nah, I, 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 I love that. I, it's a freaking story Sorry, about I'm a, with a you, boy. Gary. Like, yeah, to me, it's a it's not like a feminine product or anything, that's, even though it's no. written by J.K. Rowling. That's what I really like about the product is like the, the product, the the uh, the whole world of Harry Potter is that it is for everyone. It's, it's gender for girls, neutral. It's for boys. It's, it's for, a modern like, audience. Gender neutral. Well, but and, in like the best kind of way. Like it is open to everyone. And J.K. You know? Rowling can write men. Yeah, you can write males. Like that's really difficult for for some women. Sorry, 
I'm not sorry. That's, it, it's at least she could yeah. in the late '90s, early 2000s. I don't know if she could right now. But. Yeah, I do. Her, um, detective books are pretty good. You see it from both perspectives, a male and female. They're pretty great. Interesting. Uh, we also have, even though he just went off camera, we had a surprise addition to this. Oh, here he is. I knew he wasn't going to miss this. I gave him the opportunity. Surprise or sympathetic? <laughs> sympathetic a little yeah. bit. Um, uh, we've got our man. Scott from Sporting. And I just News knocked podcast. my camera because I'm a, I'm What's so on? excited. Thank you. Thank you. It was actually, um, I bribed him and begged, but I'm here. With $4, yes. I was actually, no. It was uh, $9.99 because I became a member. Sorry about this, man. That's why I came off camera. Uh, thank you for having me, though. I uh, Really good entrance. Really good entrance. It, it was exactly what everyone would expect. That's true. That's true. How is everybody? Good. 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 So Hi. let's get, we just kind of went over our first initial reactions when we heard this. Labs was crying because she thought they're going to fucking ruin everything. Yes. Gary was like, it's probably going to be, you know, could be a disaster, but also could be brilliant. Um, Order Black, what was your, when you first heard the fucking announcement, what did you think? So, Blabs and I, we did a stream talking about Harry Potter, and I said, and this was before all this stuff happened. Mm -hmm. This was like this was a, month, ago. a month ago, two months ago. And I was Three, like, four. what I think really needs to happen is they need to come back and do a Harry Potter premium format TV show. And you were like, don't do it. I don't know. They're <laughs> going to mess it up, uh, which I, I totally get. And then when they, I saw the news drop, I felt like you. I was like, oh, no, it's real. I, I'm i a little hesitant to uh, to give that back to Hollywood at this moment in time. But I then I heard that J.K. Rowling is an executive producer on it. She's still got all of the same kind of rules that you need to stick to in order to use this property. So that makes me feel a little bit better. But then again, I also know that J.K. can also kind of manipulate her own mm. product when it goes out and, and does stuff. So cautiously optimistic. I'm definitely going to be watching it uh, for sure the second it comes out. Um, but I'm not going to be like... This is going to be the best version of it ever. So we'll see. Cautious, okay. What, what about you, Scott? What was your initial gut feeling for this thing? They're going to ruin it. Um, that, <laughs> that was it. I really, you know, I, what hasn't been rebooted that's been ruined for the most part, like rebooted, not, you know, uh, a sequel or a pre, but rebooted. It's all been ruined. Um, I'm, I'm like a big Harry F Potter fan. I'm not scared to say it. I understand like it is weird for some reason. I don't know why. Cause it's a story about no. a boy who yeah. went from the most horrible upbringing to becoming the savior and all the lessons he learns throughout. It's a great story about humility and uh, love and uh, you know, I try to get my kids into it and the books are even that much better. Um, and that's what I, what I pray is they're going to, what I've heard is they're doing a book a season and that they, they keep to the books and we get more, you know, we get the, um, the house elves, uh, yep. you know, we get peeves, we get all that stuff. But, um, if JK wasn't a part of it, which I think is almost impossible, um, I'd have an issue. Uh, but she has been way too known to, add we'll say add on to her canon at Pottermore for the last how many years like you know Dumbledore was not gay you know from the get-go but he became he gay was. well I, I have no issue with that either because I mean the dude wears dresses that's fine I, yeah. I, there I, my opinion on Dumbledore is that when when she first made that announcement it really fucking irritated me because it's right. like right why the fuck do we need to know that who fucking cares right. like why would you add that in there mm -hmm. But then I think what none of us really probably realized was she already had this story with Grindelwald and Dumbledore, right. which was the she, catalyst for what things that happened. Go ahead, Blabs. Well, I was going to say, uh, I did some research on this because I was like, well, why would you do this? What's been going on? She's changing canon. So what happened was when they were working on the script for Half-Blood Prince, which is before Deathly Hallows was published mm -hmm. in 2007, there was a, she was reading the script and it said that Dumbledore referenced a female love interest when he was younger and she immediately scrapped it. She told him, remove it. He's not straight. He's gay. So that was before Deathly House even was released, like the book. So that was there's an article from BBC from 2007 stating that. Mm -hmm. So it was just never announced. She just never announced it. But I discovered this a couple months ago only that it's actually 
huh. from 2007. It's yeah. canon. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. affect his character like no. whatsoever. He's not the like, do be magic, be magic. So. The relationship between Dumbledore and Harry, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Right. It, it's a mentor situation. So I, I th- it only I affects think it the earlier. Now, if it was a Disney movie, it might be a little different. It would be totally story. different. Fabulous. A little different. Yeah. You know, but it, it does affect the the Fantastic Beast and stuff like that. So yeah. there is a reason for it. And, you know, it doesn't change that he's badass. You know, um, I, I do hope if they do a reboot, we get the first actor more like that instead of, did you put your name Richard in the Harris. Goblet of Fire? Richard you know, I don't, Harris I don't, is yeah. the perfect yeah. Dumbledore. I'll be perfect. real. Yes. I blame, I blame Mike Newell, the yeah. director of Goblet of Fire for that. Yep. That's who I blame because mm-hmm. there's a lot of shit in Goblet of Fire that doesn't make sense. Oh, it's sense. horrible. No, Mike Newman never read the script either, though. He was like, ah, I'm just going to wing it. He never read the books. He or never, never read the book. He no, no, no idea. In the worst movie, he finally figured out the character, which is Half Blood yeah. Prince. Oh, uh, right. Yes. Yeah. That movie. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And I think that Half Blood Prince, he finds the right thing. Here's the thing uh, with the original actor, I don't feel like he would have been able to do justice to order the Phoenix duel with Voldemort. Right. To right. What he has to do in Half Blood Prince. I, I just I just don't know how that would have translated. I think you needed somebody to walk a, a, a better line. More fierce. Like we saw yeah. in the sixth. Well, between meek and powerful, right? Yes. That's pretty much what Dumbledore is. He has to yeah. give off this air of power and mm-hmm. respect. And you have to get an older actor to do that. But then you also have that have that kind of Peter energy. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Capaldi, ooh, bro. Like, and I think I don't even think it's <gasps> Mark till. That's a great idea. Write that down. Write that down. down. <laughs> Is it Order of the Phoenix? Um, uh, in the book, when they're in the office and they bring uh. Marianne, the, the snitch. Uh, Marietta? Bring, mm-hmm. Marietta, yeah, yes. And that is the, like, first time, I think, that Harry sees, like, what they're talking about when people fear Dumbledore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As soon mm-hmm. as, like, she gets threatened, as one of his students is threatened, he immediately, his demeanor changes, his posture changes, yep. he's got his wand in his hand, and he's ready to rock and roll. Yeah. No. And you need somebody to be able to do that when the time comes for these movies. Mm-hmm. And ironically, I think Dumbledore might be the least cared about recast of all these people. Like mm-hmm. for for you guys, what are you thinking will be the di- most difficult part rebooting this quickly, character wise? Will it be the 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 big three, or will it be some of the characters like Hagrid or Snape or McGonagall? Honestly, all of them, because yeah. everyone's going to be like me, 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 and from all different angles and different sides, and be like, I mean, Robbie Coltrane just died, so like, how can you touch Hagrid? You know. I think it's going to be everybody, especially I, I think, the adults, though. I think for me, th- what you need to nail in this show is the the, the three. Golden Because the they're the ones right in the front. They're in every scene. It's Harry, Ron, and Hermione. If those actors can't hold that, and you're starting young. They're 11 years old. It's mm-hmm. difficult. Like That was one of the uh, miracles of the movies is that they got a cast that worked so well at that age. And they were able to grow up. So that's going to be crucial to find those three actors. I mean, not to say that Hagrid's going to be very difficult to fill those shoes. Mrs. Dumbledore, Weasley. Mrs. Weasley. I mean, all of the characters are so unique. And the the actors that they picked in the movies did those phenomenally. So it's going to be hard to mm. replace them. I think it's gonna be very hard to figure this all out. There's gonna be there's gonna be people unhappy all over the aisle. Oh, absolutely. Be like a yeah, I figure cast. if they get most of it <laughs> yeah. uh, right, I think that's probably a win. Like, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. uh, the Potter fan base has gotten so weird. I think it's We're more awful. galvanized now since. Uh, I, honestly, I think J.K.'s takes have uh, purged a lot of the worst <laughs> elements of the Potter fan base. To be honest, with <laughs> it's you. true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I think they're gone and uh, they're just going to boycott it anyway. Uh, and, and maybe we'll have hope, but uh, yeah, you got to get those big three, right? And yeah. They're going to gender swap or not. Ge- well, maybe they will. Uh, yes. They're going to race. Swap. They're going to race swaps. A couple of people. Hermione. Hermione. I think Hermione. Cause yeah. like, th- that's one of the golden rules, right? Once you race swap, you can never race swap back. Right. You have uh, April O'Neil race swapped. Now it's, she's black forevermore. Right. So that, that's what I'm afraid they're going to do that with Hermione. Oh, she's definite. I, I think if they keep her black, I say keep her because they basically made this establishment for Cursed yeah. Child because JK wanted a fucking virtue signal and didn't like didn't want to admit that she 
uh, described her this way in the book. Yeah. She um, relates to Hermione. She said so since the 90s that she based Hermione off of herself. So unless J.K. Rowling identifies as a black woman in the 90s, she's lying. And if you're going to do that, if you're going to cast a little black girl, you have to be willing to make her look insufferable at times because that is Hermione's Buck-tooth. character. And be called She's, a mudblood. It, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a whole thing. other thing just, you have to get you're into. Call, so now you're calling the black girl a mudblood. You're mm-hmm. having the black girl be laughed at yeah. for trying to lead a basically free the slaves. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it a, doesn't oh my work. God, yes. It, it oh, does not work. If, like, you can't portray that right if you decide to race swap her and make her black because of the things that she's going to have to go through. Yeah. Like, it, you are asking for the wrong fucking for a lot of problems. It leads you to some really bad places. It, mm-hmm. it, right. It does. Well, so they shouldn't do it. You know what? And, it's and not fair for the little girl that they're going to cast. They hold strong <laughs> and say, we don't give a fuck what people say. Yeah. We, we are casting it the way we are. This is the way it is in the books. It'll eventually blow over. Yeah. Like, it, it'll all eventually blow over. If it's uh, good. If, if it's good. Uh, if it's bad, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. Uh, but at least we know that they have J.K. Rowling there. They have source material. They have plenty of source material that they do not need to deviate. They don't have time to fucking deviate from source material. You need, like, the reason you're getting full season of these books is to put more of the books in. So mm-hmm. I think J.K. will be adamant about that. And she and she has way more power today than she even had when the movies were coming. Oh, out. definitely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I, I, I think some of the, like, the adult characters were so iconic that it will be hard to, I don't know, to, to fill their shoes. But there is, I mean, English actors, there's enough great English actors that are now in their 40s that they can definitely use. But I just hope they give Ron, like, they don't make him just the bumbling idiot. Because oh, Ron got done wrong in He's the movies. Order of the, the Order of the Phoenix got is done absolutely wrong. the worst movie. Yes. They, they ruin Ron's character. They make him this third wheel in every He's, scene. He just goes, eh. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like the he's like the crux of it. it. Well, he's the crux of it. Like there's there's moments they gave to Hermione that were that were his in the movie, and it's like he's the heart. He's the heart of it, and he is the courage. Courage. Hermione is the brains. He's the heart. Yes, absolutely. And and to to do what they did to him in in so many different ways, even subtle ways, ruining Mm -hmm. his character or his moments. Whether that's in Deathly Hollows, where he screams, "Your parents are dead!" Right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, you have that, no family. Yeah. That didn't happen, right? No. It, Harry's the one, like who who brought some of these things up, right? It, it wasn't Ron being this vicious, just no hearted, not just cold hearted, no hearted guy. It wasn't right. the case. Um, and then obviously they tied a lot. They even leaned harder into the Harry Hermione stuff in the movies, oh, yeah. which they shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are so many things that they could do so much better and when you do look at the books to the movies i think that the harry potter movies are one of the biggest accomplishments maybe in cinematic history because you have the vast majority of the cast that stayed on board for eight movies even when they started as very very young actors the vast Mm -hmm. majority of the cast stayed there you also they're all for the most part well received Mm. like all of the movies people are like yeah you know they're pretty good now, if you love the books, you might hate what they did with some of them, but mm-hmm. the movies themselves aren't bad movies. They're made you, well, yeah. You know, they're, they're they're made well, and you are taking a big risk by rebooting it the way they are. Well, think but, about the age of the kids. I mean, like, they yeah. hit it out of the park that Jenny Weasley may have been the one that wasn't the great best actress, but other than that, all those kids grew into their roles where they were, they became those characters. I mean, Neville, dude, by the end, you're just like, when he pulls his pimp move, you're like, yeah, you know, like, but that's, dude, to find that many kids and then by 10, 8, 10 years later, they're actually really good actors. That, that is a miracle. The casting agent or whoever did the casting did a fantastic job. So maybe hire them again. I will There's say a for Ginny that... Go oh, go on, Garrett. There's a okay, little bit of, of her... <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to start. There's a little bit of, of like them going through the crucible of acting all the time on a show that makes them better actors over time. So if they could find kids that have that charisma, have that mm-hmm. connection with each other, and they can play off each other, they can maybe even kind of formulate a better actor eventually. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, for Ginny, I feel like it was partially the actress's fault, but 
in like the first four films, she kind of has that Ginny attitude, especially in the fourth mm-hmm. one where she like bumps in the front and George she's like, oh, don't be so mean. Watch where you're going and all that stuff. And then like the writers just tossed her personality all away. She was just shit. Here you go. Have some cookie. <laughs> Your shoelace is untied. Half oh, blood, that was so cringy. Half Blood Prince is such a bad. Oh, like, God, it's, oh so... it's so cringy. Let me run into like this marsh by in my bathrobe. Like, what okay. do you, Ryan, what do you guys think is the worst movie? For me, Ooh, order my the least favorite, or, um, My least favorite movie is Goblet of Fire yeah. followed by Half-Blood Prince because those are my two favorite books. Yes. And those to me are the ones that I was Order of the Phoenix deviates a lot from yes, the books does. as well, but I didn't like Order of the Phoenix as much. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't bother me as much when I watch the movie. Um, yeah, Goblet of Fire was destroyed. Of, there, there are parts of every single book and storylines that are weaven, woven throughout this thing that we can actually see done justice to. Now, obviously, everyone talks about Goblet of Fire because they dropped the house Thank elves. You. The yep. the Triwizard Tournament is a joke. Mm-hmm. Dumbledore's depiction makes no fucking sense. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, for sure, Goblet of Fire. But like for me, I think one of the things that one of the things that probably isn't on everybody's top list that I'll that I'll give is Percy Weasley's story. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. because he has son. deleted scenes though. He does. And they filmed a lot. Of, they filmed some stuff for it for sure. Mm-hmm. But his character in the book. It doesn't take up a ton of time, but it, his story is very important. His departure from the Weasleys, him siding with the ministry instead of Harry and his family, right. and creating that split that obviously mm-hmm. really affects the Weasley family, especially Molly and Arthur. Arthur, you don't see it too much. Molly, you see it a lot. Mm-hmm. But that weighs on Harry in an incredible way because it, Harry Potter goes through a lot of fucking shit mm-hmm. in this book series. But... To see this family who continues to sacrifice and do things for him uh, just have to go through one more thing, and that being the loss of basically one of their kids, all because they have his back. Hmm. It's just so much guilt and so much weight on someone who already has a lot of that on their shoulders in Harry Potter, only for them to, you know, bring him back the way they did in Deathly Hollows, only to have a tragic loss in the family a second later. Fuck, man. Like that, oh, yeah. that story, I think, is a, was a. It's tough to do that story in the movies because you only have so much time, but they can actually do that with yeah, this series. Yeah, Remus and Tonks with te- Little Teddy. Like, they didn't yeah. give that justice. There's a lot. You're Charlie right. Weasley. Well, the, the whole reveal of Dumbledore's past and the, the biography that that Harry reads, that's like back and forth through that last yeah, book. Removing I would Remus love to see that. For, for that much, she was hugely important. In yes, the, very uh, important. Think, yeah. But and half like, the prints, like not, you know, we get in the pent of a couple of times. You know, it's like you don't see any of the gaunt yeah. stuff. Yeah, oh, not at all. yeah. That, that no hokey in all of them. But Voldemort's background is completely passed over in Half Blood Prince, mm-hmm. and that's like literally all Dumbledore it's wants Harry to do in that, that fucking... book. Half Blood Prince right. is so stupid because the <laughs> stupid the purpose of the book is one. It's always about a mystery, right? Harry Potter books are about fucking mysteries, mm-hmm. right? Guess what? This one's called Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. The big mystery is who the fuck is the Half-Blood Prince? And they don't mention the Half-Blood Prince or advanced potion making for like an hour and a half straight in that movie. Right. When All about when making when out. mentioned in every <laughs> chapter, I think, of the book. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. obsessed with the book. Obsessed I mean, he literally with. gets the elves to like stalk Draco and all that to see what he's doing too. And with the book, it's like, okay. Those yeah. last two books are so integral for Gary... Uh, Gary um, yeah, Gary. Harry's Gary Potter. Gary, yeah, it wasn't Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry, Harry's Russian, development Gary. into adulthood, <laughs> and because it's a coming of age story, right? So it's mm-hmm. you, you, he sees Dumbledore as this perfect wizard. He's like the best there is, and he's no faults. And then you, yeah. then you start to understand that he's a little bit more complex than that. And this villain that he sees his entire school life as Snape you tear that down too. And you think he's worse than even Harry thought. And then you get to learn a little bit more about that and more complex. So I am so excited about that aspect of them right. doing these because of all those little details and those character moments, the moments with Sirius black and how he thinks Harry is James at mo- in moments because he wants that connection again, but he can't quite. Well, that was it. just in the movie. That, that moment where he goes, great th- job, that James. Great that was a movie. great ad. That was a great movie. ad. Because yes. that, that, that was the underlying, their whole relationship. Yes. Was that kind of always being kind of in the danger zone. Yeah, he wanted James co- back. Popping yeah. up in the middle of a, 
of a fireplace in the Hogwarts, like yep. in Hogwarts, like and then amongst shaming, kids. And then shaming Harry for not being more like his dad. What a yes. fucking yeah. asshole series yeah. it was. But that's why it's so very important that they get the casting right this time right, with yeah. the Marauders, uh, mm. with Snape, with Lily and James, age wise. Yeah, because they're if way you too had old. Just wa- if you had just watched the movies, you would have no idea that h- how young these characters actually are. Mm-hmm. Lily and James died when they were what, like twenty one years old. Yeah, they, yep. yeah. So but, like that's the same age as the Marauders and Snape. So they should be mm-hmm. thirty three, like right. thirty two. I like, think they went with Alan Rickman's casting, and then they were like, "We have to age everyone around Alan." Yeah. And if that's the reason, I'm okay with that because he was amazing. But another thing they got to nail and show the reason, like you got to also pick up on the Dumbledore like subtleties, like the um, teacher for um, uh, the dark arts, uh, defense oh. against the dark arts. Every year, there's a reason he picks a certain. Like one year is um, uh, the oh. flamboyant lilac guy. Uh, Locker. Yeah, yeah, he oh, picks him to show <laughs> Harry what fame can do to somebody and arrogance. He picks Remus to show him like, you know, how, how the wizarding world can turn on you and how, you know, humble you need to be like, and to teach him certain things at different times. Like if you really look at these books, Dumbledore is a master chess player and the things he's doing throughout the whole thing without her, like the way she wrote it, she didn't have to come out at any point and tell us that's what he did. You had to actually like, look into it and really research. That's why I read the books twice because in that aspect, she's a lot like a um, George R. R. Martin or, or somebody who like lets the, the intelligence of their reader figure it out. And that's what I love about these stories. And I hope they hit that even more. If this is going to be a a non bullshit reboot, which I pray. pray. Gary, what's the thing that you most want to see that you don't feel like books got into like that you want to see delved into in this? Mm, well, you've covered some of it, uh, but I definitely, I, I just talked about it. They need to get more into the background of Voldemort, which they did a great job in the movies making them bad. But the books from the first fucking chapter to damn near the end set this guy up. And he's not in, he's not in every book, but everything he touched goes to shit. And he's, and he's a formidable villain. He has destroyed. You were just bringing up Sirius. You know, Sirius is a tragic tale. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Guy who went to uh, Azkaban, went to prison for years, almost driven mad for something he didn't do, comes out and he's bitter. And he almost, I mean, got, gets this close to being freed. Uh, but Peter Pettigrew gets away mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and it affects him and it eventually gets him killed. It eventually gets him killed, uh, which sucks. And uh, the the way Voldemort's shadow is is put over this entire series is exemplified. It is laid out in Half Blood Prince by you going to the Gaunts and you going through every bit yep. of his past, and it's the whole point of it. Like he, Dumbledore even talks about it when he's at King's Cross Station. Is you know don't pity the dead. Right. Uh, pity the living and those who live without love. He's talking about freaking that little abortion that's sitting, you know, in the movies, <laughs> yeah. sitting under under the chair, which is Voldemort. You find out that this guy, like, was just, you know, he had a horrible childhood. He had a mm-hmm. terrible, terrible childhood, and it it screwed him up, you know. And and the whole thing about this story, it, it's J.K. wrote it to deal with grieving. Like yeah. she was writing this book, grieving her mother. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so it's about death and how we deal with death. Yep. Uh, and it gets freaking dark, Hollows. you know, and the, and the Deathly Hollows part one, too, like the, it showed how dark it can get. I mean, you know, we saw get somebody almost get it by a snake, mm-hmm. we saw a snake mm-hmm. come out of a, de- you know, a husk of a body. I mean, that's that's yeah. pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. That's why I like it, because because uh, I grew up with that. So I want a lot more of the background of Voldemort. Uh, yeah, you have to from Half Blood Prince. That's the one thing I miss the most. You know, one thing that Garrett brought up that I it was not done justice to in the movies. Somehow, with two fucking movies, they still missed a lot of shit in Deathly Hollows. Okay, but um, Dumbledore's kind of the breaking down of the character of Dumbledore. That's something that's very difficult to do. We've seen mm-hmm. destruction of our heroes in a lot of different forms of media, and that's what they do in De- in Deathly Hollows, the book. Yeah. Harry finds out this person that he's, you know, idolized, looked up to, protected him, that could do no wrong. All of a sudden, he's got questions about that. A lot of questions about that. And 
the discovery of Dumbledore's past and all these things he did. But at the end, the very end, Harry Potter says, I found out all these things, but I trust him. Mm -hmm. I trust the Dumbledore I knew. All of that just to find out that he'd been fucking lying to him the whole time to get him to, because he had to die. So that he fucking walks to be and he names his kid to after him. To do it. And that's well, it, Carrie. Then, but then but then he has the realization that Dumbledore knew he had to think that to go to do it the way he did in order to be yep. able to come back. Mm -hmm. Like like so he was right to trust him, but there's just so many layers to that. Well, and and I think it's it's something that gets completely blown right. over in the movies. Yeah. Because when he takes when Dumbledore finds out that um, when Harry comes back after the graveyard and he finds out that um, Voldemort took Harry's blood and used it, there's a line that's per there's a twinkle in his eye and mm -hmm. almost like yeah. a glint of like, triumph. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Something yeah. Like that. You find out why, but the beauty of it is like he can never tell Harry the reason until after the boy sacrifices himself. Because yeah. if he went there knowing, oh, I'm going to live through it, it wouldn't have worked. He had to sacrifice himself to allow, first off, to allow himself to come back. But also he did it for everybody else. So they the that last fight at the end. I love it in the book because they're all they're all, all surrounding there. them too, yeah. and he's no, calling yeah. oh, oh, right, so and he keeps good. calling them. So yeah, so dude, good. and and he protected all of them through that sacrifice because yes. the 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 tragedy of Voldemort is he doesn't he can never understand the meaning of love. Mm -hmm. Love means he just doesn't understand it at all, and that's his downfall. That's his downfall. And Deathly Hallows but, was my favorite just, book because of that that arc. That entire book is about death and learning to accept it and having the courage to go and die for your whole your love i mean his mother died for him to live and mm -hmm. he's dying for everyone else to live so it's, it's a beautiful story i love the deconstruction that dumbledore has and you kind of learn how he is a, a master planner he plans all this out and how to do it just the right way I and how Everything leads throughout the entire book series. It all leads to that. And so sad. It's a satisfying. How ending. about uh, in the books, Grindelwald stands yeah. for the dude. At the end. Yeah. That at was the funny. end. Like, dying. At he, the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he like, uh, he, he turned it around at the end, which was, I thought that was really, I mean, he did it which, for which the love of his life, up, which does bring up discussions about how that final duel went between them which we'll never yeah. get to see because Fantastic Beasts Ugh. series and everything. But there's always been speculation about that duel right. and how it went down, especially because he just goes and you know sits in the own prison that he built, basically. Right. Um, yeah, a lot of people believe he gave, he let Dumbledore win, you know, because he could and not. And also how, how the fuck, he's got the fucking Elder Wand. Yeah, right? and he's so, a powerful yeah, wizard. Yeah. And he also could see the future. So, I mean, come on. Yep. Um. I've also heard an interesting theory that the Elder Wand actually just chooses the most powerful wizard or some bullshit. Yeah, no, that, which is, which is an interesting know. theory. Yep. Um, which is an interesting theory. But uh, look, let me get a couple of these. You guys are blowing it up. At the beginning of the stream, we had uh, 10 gift memberships from Hayden. Thank you so wow. much. And then we had 20 from Low Watermark. Holy cow. Uh, you guys blew it up to start this stream. Then another 20 gift memberships from Press Tilde. Uh, that's five bucks a piece. You're talking about 50, 100, 100, and then another 50 with 10 gift memberships from Duke Devil. Thank you so much. We will get to all the super chats. Um, you know, I'll get to all the super chats for the stream, man. So don't worry about that, guys. We're just having a great conversation here, to be honest with you. Um, uh, so what's the what's the closest movie to a book? What's the best ooh. adaptation? I know mine, but uh, Ch Chamber. Um, I, I would agree. say Chamber probably. I would say number one. Yeah. One or two. Chris Columbus did the best job, in my opinion. Yeah, he did. Those are and my. Those are some of my favorite movies. Yeah. Those are the closest adaptations. Yeah. For sure. Also, because they're the just... smallest books too, so we have yeah. to give them that. How far Chamber off is Azkaban? Is better than the first one. Azkaban is like Azkaban miles significantly off. different. Yeah. That's what I thought. It's so, so what did you much, say, not Gary? As much as some of the future ones. I said so. I think Chamber is a little better than the first. I like them both, both the first ones, but I'll I'll um, I make people. Snake is cool. Azkaban's the best movie by far. It's the best directed movie. It has the best music. The shots and the transitions between scenes are so mm -hmm. well done. Like yeah. oh, when the Dementor like glosses Alphonse over like, was, like and just he's clearly the most talented director who uh, you know 
Chris Columbus set up the world. Yes, he, he did, did all the hard work so Alphonse Card could, could run. Yeah. I don't like how they changed everything with the blue blue green tint of like the filming from three and on is kind of a huge uh, drastic, especially it, in Half Blood Prince. It got you darker. Can't see shit in that Half Blood Prince is like blurry and all yellow. Yeah. Tinted Half Blood Prince is like season eight of Game of Thrones. I can't see oh. shit. Yeah, can't see it. Really it's like dark and uh, yeah, it's it's. We weren't allowed to talk about that, Gary. Um, I, I've, I've got saying, right. like season season right. eight or season oh. seven of this. Dunkin' Egg better be freaking perfect because after watching Game of Thrones and going through that disaster of a final season, this has a actually has a book series that you can go. Yeah, these to are all written. It's complete. Movie. It's it complete. Oh, so you, it's HBO, complete. come on. Do you remember when George R. R. Martin? Bitched and backhanded, uh, freaking J.K. Rowling uh -huh. for winning a I forgot some some Saturn the award. Was it Hugo? Oh, Hugo. okay. Hugo, I think it was the Hugo award. Uh, and it's like, dude, she finished her books. Yep, yeah. you're her bitch. Yep, you're her yeah. bitch. Yes, J.K. <laughs> Rowling's bitch and J.R. Tolkien's bitch. Can't even finish Dunkin' uh, Egg, you son of a bitch. I, yeah. I've got a, all right. I've got a, one that might be a little controversial, and that is not controversial for us necessarily, but the depiction of Snape in the movies. Versus the books. Oh yeah, in the books, I, he's greasy. I think that although he's Alan Rickman, in the books. Alan Rickman plays an incredible Snape. He's too old, but the like he is such a, an amazing actor, yeah, he and the gravitas actor. he brought to that. Everyone is forever going to associate Snape with him. The way that he speaks, all of this yep. shit. That's what they now think of when they read the books because yep. of the job he did. But I think it's undeniable that in the movies, probably for rightly so, because he didn't have as much time for a lot of this stuff, they portray him much more as just a straight up good guy hero in the end, who is just, you know, doing all this stuff, pretending. Right. But in reality, he's not. No, he's you know, just doing it for his- He's a bully. He's a bully and an asshole, yeah. but not just that. The, right. the Snape, like in the movies, when they're showing Snape coming to Dumbledore to tell him, that the Potters are in danger. Right. He says, save them, save them all. He didn't give a shit. That's not he, what he yeah. said in the no, books. No, In no. the books, he wanted Lily to be saved, right? Yep. And uh, Dumbledore says, why don't you ask to spare her life? And he says, I already did. Uh, and like, you find out that he wanted him, to, he wanted Voldemort to kill James and kill yep. Harry. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't fucking care yep. as long as he didn't kill Lily. He'd already like bargained with him for that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and Dumbledore was like, and, you disgust me, yeah. yeah. Dumbledore just shits all over him when that happens, rightly so. But we don't, you don't get to see that played out. Um, in, in the same way that when he makes his, uh, it, and it's a magical scene. Yeah. Like in Deathly Hallows Part 2, that is some of the best cinematography, score, mm -hmm. everything that they mm -hmm. do to weave all these memories together while playing, you know, those those strings, which is like, you know, Dumbledore's death, that, that music from Dumbledore's death scene and everything. It's perfect. Yeah. But- um, you know, don't tell me you still care for the boy. Expecto Patronum, right? Runs around the dough. But there was a line that you missed in there. Right. Mm -hmm. And the line was Snape venomously saying, him? Yep. Like, no, I don't give a fuck about Harry Potter. Right. I care about Lily. He loved her so much that Obsession. he would protect yeah. him. It's like complex. it was, it was, it was not, yeah. Obsession might be the word, but quarter black, it was like complex. I don't know. It was like, uh, it was toxic. Let's just put it that way. He was, I mean, they don't even tell you how many people he killed like, and did dirty before that moment. Like, I Early hope we on, see more. Yeah. I hope we have more flashbacks to the actual war. Uh, oh, I, mean, I would like to I see. Add a thing. I would that, just, that was a question I wanted to ask you guys because there are very, very few moments in the Harry Potter book series that are not Harry POV stories. Yeah. Um. There's a couple. I mean, obviously the first chapter when they're bringing oh, the Harry there with too. with Dumbledore. You have a couple parts where, um, you know, when Fudge gets sacked as the minister and you go right. see the other yeah. minister. You have now some that are depicted in the movies as well, like Snape and Bellatrix and Narcissa when he yep. makes the Unbreakable Vow. You have a couple moments here and there that are not. Harry Potter POV stories, things that happen outside of the realm, but not many are actually written down. Right. Is there anything that you would want to see written down that you would want to see happen? Like uh, Dumbledore, like maybe before you understand what's going on with the Horcruxes and with uh, everything, maybe Dumbledore going to the wreckage of the Gaunt House. Maybe that's yeah. like, that is there anything you'd want to yeah. see, in, whether in flashbacks or whatever? Gary, you just said don't change a fucking thing, right? 
Yeah, I, I don't want to see anything added. I want to see Dumbledore's funeral. Uh, I want to see the other ministry, other minister. Mm-hmm. I love that. Oh, yeah. Chapter. Yes. I think that yes. chapter, chapter, also the complexity of Fudge. Like, he was, a, he was a villain, but he's a humbled, like, he's a humbled guy at the end. Yep. And, he, and, and then he just passively mentions that, oh, Sirius was innocent after all. So we know, the world knows that Sirius was innocent. At least that's something at the end. So, I no, I don't think they have time to add any of that. Gary, no, I'm with Gary. Gary, yeah, do you think he's? Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just gonna say, you think Fudge was a villain, or was he? Was he like most polit- Like he didn't want to lose power and scare. Like I don't know he if he was, like oh, he was a villain. villain. Was a flaw. I don't think he was evil. He was a right. Flaw. Okay. He okay. Yeah. A, he he, was, he wasn't evil, 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 but his fear led to yes. a lot yep. of harm. Yep. Um, Terrible shit. Yep. Yeah. And somebody said in the chat, it's interesting. Uh, Hagrid getting Harry. That scene where he. He gets oh, Harry from the wreckage. house, and then he goes to Sirius Black and gets the bike, and that could be an interesting little yeah, ad. You know like, what I would quick, like something to see? quick, like very small things like that could be interesting. Sh- show yeah, me like, what fucking happened. Anything, I want to know the timeline. I don't want to know the exact fucking timeline of when, uh, of when Voldemort tries to kill Harry, house blows up, all this stuff happens. I want to see what Dumbledore was doing when Dumbledore got there. I want to see. When Haggard got there, I want to see uh, who found out that that happened. Right. Uh, I, w- I want to see Sirius Good getting there. Oh, like, I, I, did Pettigrew go and check it out after, like, not hearing anything back? Like, what the fuck's going on? Did Pettigrew apparate there? And they'd be like, oh, fuck, shit went bad, apparate away. Like, <laughs> I want to see everything that happened at the Potter's house in the hour after all of this happened. Yeah, I mean, it's a magical town, correct? So um, I would like to see that also in an extension of that. I want to see where, because Pettigrew, what a scumbag character. Like these guys took him. Yeah, they picked on him, but they took him under their wing and he just was always going for the more powerful person. But the part where he cuts his finger and kills the muggles and leaves Sirius to take the rap. Like, I would love to just see that moment too. Cause you never expect him to be at well, all powerful. And I'd like to see him die the way he was supposed to die. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. know, yeah. Yes. Himself himself. Because, Except just being stunned cause that's a good like, moment. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a good moment because Dumbledore told him, right. It, guilty yep. as Harry was feeling. Uh, in Prisoner of Azkaban, Dumbledore was once once again very much reminding Harry of what makes him different yes. than Voldemort, what makes him good, what makes him pure. And it's the fact that he loves and the fact that he didn't want to see, even though he really doesn't know them, especially Sirius. He knows right. Lupin a little bit, but he didn't want his father's friends to become murderers over this. And that decision, he said, listen, you, you might think it was bad now, but there's going to be some day down the line that you – are happy that you spared his life. Yep. And it comes when his it was pity questions that for a Bilbo's fucking hand. second yes. in Malfoy Manor, yep. and he chokes himself to death. <laughs> Holy yep. shit. Yeah, it was vicious, yeah. man. Yeah, mm-hmm. But deservedly oh, so. that's the whole point of the movie. That's that's why that's why Dumbledore went to such lengths to protect Draco. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Because D- Dumbledore had, you know, through his uh, youth, had gotten close to that darkness mm-hmm. and saw, like, what he he could have been Grindelwald very easily, yeah, and and backed away from it. It's not it's not that different from the Doctor and the Master's story in Doctor Who, if you're familiar with that. You know, like the the Master was just like the Doctor, except he decided to kill one of his enemies one time, and it just got worse and worse. So that D- D- Dumbledore was always trying to protect kids like yeah. that, and always trying to protect the friends, and it's very consistent, and uh, it, it's it's a good lesson. It's a good lesson to learn. Yeah. Do you know what I want? It's like a really, really small detail, but Molly Weasley's brothers were killed in the first oh, yeah. war. And yes. they never actually say it. Those were her siblings. They right. always just say Gideon and per- Peveril, per- whatever his name was. And that's it. But like and, later on in Potomac or whatever it was, J.K. Rowling did the whole timeline. Yeah. And you see that that was Molly's siblings. And it's like Ron's uncles were brutally murdered mm. like it took like, like, like five death years to kill yeah, yeah. Well, what about neville it's never mentioned but yeah, it's i was gonna like, say that too neville's oh, that, story neville's Dude, that whole his family in the in the, in the, in the, in the, the uh, hospital hospital that oh, yeah, saint mungo's. Saint, we didn't see I any saint mungo's in the hospital. Uh, yeah Gotta we, go we to didn't saint see mungo's. any saint mungo's in this so um, what are we saying we just i mean i think all of us just want like the entire book into the season like i don't want to miss any quidditch i want the quidditch world cup with yes. what's his name ba- um bagman like yes. i want you know bagman's a big missing part because well, yeah, it's huge it's huge it, it shows you like he 
he like um, screws over the guys with the leprechaun gold and then showing how Harry is still such a good dude. Like he gives them the money and is like a silent partner, you know, like mm-hmm. of their, their joke shop. Um, well, because he's, he's giving it away because he doesn't feel like he earned it. Right. Yeah, he feels guilty. He feels guilty about it. So he gives and doing them, good yeah. with it. And, he, and, and he's he rich as fuck. Away. Tried to give it away to Cedric's parents. They yeah. wouldn't take it. Yeah, yeah. his mom, such as mom wasn't even in the movie. It's like yeah. Cedric had one parent. That's it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm with Gary. I'm like, I want the entire book in it. I don't want yep. them to stray outside of it because once they start exactly. going outside of what the text ruining is, the lore, yeah. that gives you that gives you moments you can really mess. So, well, they, stuff what up. about um, Quarter Black? What about Pottermore though? Because she has done a lot extra stuff with Pottermore, changing like maybe not changing the, the, the story. Pottermore. This but is, I, is she I richening I don't it? About, I don't know about disregarded. There's obviously a lot of backstory and explanation for some of these things. I do think that there's some room potentially at points because a lot of this story is told not through dialogue, not through conversations, but through Harry's inner thoughts about mm-hmm. things. Yeah, that's going to so be hard to translate. There's, that's the difficult thing mm-hmm. to represent and get on mm-hmm. screen. So if there's potential abilities to, to show scenes here and there, and that's why I asked the question earlier about things that are outside of his POV potentially, to give you, you a little bit better perspective yeah. of the story that was being told. Um, in some way, shape, or form. I think yeah. Hagrid going to meet the giants could be something Ooh. interesting. Oh, yeah. In the More books, drop. Because in the books, he, he's telling him the story, right? He's saying, oh, we, me and Olymp, we went to go speak with these giants, and we had a conversation. We gave him gifts and all this stuff. But it's a POV of Harry getting right. the story. It's not the actual yeah. s- scene. So it would be cool to see that in like an episode. Oh, like a flashback. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they can do that through exposition if it's done well. Yes. Right. So, yeah somebody just telling a story and then you get some of the quick cut scenes there's also the the dursleys right so they get cut out like a mm-hmm. lot towards the yeah. end yeah towards the D- end definitely. dudley dudley's little arc the tiny arc that he has yeah is kind of leaving the tea, leaving the tea for harry in deathly yeah. hollows yeah. dude so yeah. the actor who played dudley was in pale blue eye yeah. oh my god like i didn't harry. dude i could i was like oh my edgar Allan poe playing edgar Allan yeah. poe and he was yeah. he was really good at it he, he was, was really good and he was armless a and legless stick. guy apparently in, he was in uh, a Buster gambit Strokes. whatever it is on netflix really yeah that chest he's one. a good actor he's a really good I, actor. yeah i think is it's he? really funny how his name's actually harry too yeah, <laughs> the, the Dursleys are such like disgusting characters in so many ways, yep. and they're they're mm-hmm. just purely that. Especially through the first several books, once you start to learn the history, once you start to learn that Petunia knew everything about Lily going to Hogwarts, mm-hmm. that she wanted to be a she witch too, be because of that, that she was jealous, but that she like totally understood what Voldemort coming back actually meant. Yep. Um, you start to it's not sympathy or anything necessarily, but it's this understanding of, you know. She lost a lot that night too. Um, even if she was not a good person, she lost a lot that night when when her sister got blown up, basically, at least in her mind. So, yeah. And she, um, she knew she knew the right. Dumbledore explained to her about how Harry, if he stays there, he's protected by right. Did I'm not she, sure how, how he, much I can't. I, I don't know yeah, if Dumbledore explained the yeah. like the love protection necessarily but he did make it very clear that harry must stay with you right this is going to happen um i don't i don't know if she knew the inner workings of there was no love love there though right even like the movie that that actress did a great job but even in the book like when she's saying i lost a sister you know you didn't just lose a mom i lost a sister they removed it but like does she she never really shows him any love it's just big d that comes back and has some of what of an arc right Mm -hmm. dudley's the only one okay I so don't think they're a waste of space. A, That's another. She, yeah, a, a, she almost a, made Dudley uh, have a magical child, and that in the epilogue, he would have been there with his family because his child would have been going off to Hogwarts the same time as Harry's kids would. But she's like, now nah, the Dursleys was a stump that all, all the magic out, and so she removed it. That would have been cool. You know, what if, uh, what you if Dudley was actually an obscurus? <laughs> 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 Um, okay, so another example why Warner Brothers is stupid. You, Lab, you just man- mentioned the deleted scenes. There are longer versions. There are television mm-hmm. versions uh, of all these films, mm-hmm. and they never, ever put them out in physical media. Is, really? Well, they have in the first two movies, but yes. the, the Goblet of Fire has a, a very, like, a lot mm-hmm. of, you know, they're, they're singing blood, you know, uh, Hogwarts song, which is terrible. Oh, yeah. yeah like, that's Imagine the these fucking people come in, uh, 
Bobaton comes in fucking shaking their ass and doing their dances, all this shit. Ooh, fucking nah, nah. Durmstrang comes in with their guys doing their freaking dance. Oh, no, no, no. All right, Hogwarts, <laughs> your turn to show off. Hogwarts. 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 Hoggy what the Hogwarts. Jesus. <laughs> But there, <laughs> but there is crucial scenes in that movie yeah. that like make it a little better. That mm-hmm. I mean, just release them. All you would make is money. Like the, we're talking about Harry Potter fans, right. like buy everything and everything. They, the first thing uh, they they didn't do these with the uh, with the four Ks, but they did these with the Blu Rays. They did those book, you know, with the with the hard mm-hmm. card. Yeah. And everything. They've never done Can't anything as good as that. Those yeah, they're all they're brilliant. So that's the one where the first two films you can get the extended uh, Chris Columbus versions, mm-hmm. which are great. They're yeah, absolutely great. Uh, but yeah, it's just another way Warner Brothers is dumb. Yeah. You know? Apparently, the twins uh, who played Fred and George Weasley, they said they filmed like four hours worth of like footage for the first film that they could have done. So yeah. somewhere out there, they have so much more footage mm-hmm. that was never released. And There's, I bet you it's the same so for all sad. the other movies. It's just weird to me why they skipped over certain things that wouldn't have like affected the story too much, but like leaving Easy it stuff. out did. You know, like, I, I don't even know if it's busy stuff, but, like, not no, knowing... No, easy. Like, oh, really easy, yeah. Stuff. Like, no, floor. JK was telling them, yeah. don't leave out the house elves. Don't yeah. do that. It's, and they it's huge. Work. The mirror is well, important. All the CGI. Who yep. cares? They got the money now, but look, creature look at... Creature is creature. important. Like, what I a love creature. Like, creature. Like, creature in the freaking story. Cre- Dude, he's a, story another. So important. So sad. So sad, and, too. Yeah. And Regulus Black, you never even see him. yeah. You see him in one shot in half like a photo uh, half or blood something, print. right? He's on. He's a picture the book, on the on the mantle. Like, RMB in the movie. You're like, who the fuck is right. what? Yeah, right. right. And then Deathly Hallows R-M-B. with the mirror. Robert Meyer Burnett is in Harry Potter now. He could be. He could be. <laughs> he could now. Yeah, but, but yeah, like I, the creature story would be something that would it would be so R-A-B, good. It would be so incredible if they actually did that. And you could. That's something I think would benefit really well from flashbacks yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially because you've you've got what the cave looks like from the trip that harry and voldemort or mm-hmm. that harry and dumbledore just took there yeah so it would be easy to do and like easy to understand and i think it'd play over really well i mean all um, those dead people but, crazy yeah. also like, one thing that i think is order of the phoenix is just so sad for so many reasons um the way that dumbledore decides to treat harry yep. um in that but also the loss is serious obviously in the book it is. It hits you like eight times mm-hmm. because oh, yeah. excruciating, and it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's it is so stuff horrific. And anger, yeah. And because Harry sees Sirius, he doesn't just die, right? He doesn't get hit by a killing curse, right? And then fall into this thing. Now I understand why they felt like they had to do that for the movie. Otherwise, you might not understand with what you're able to tell in the book, like they were right. able to. But he falls behind there, and the veil. And he doesn't come back. And Harry's like, I know he's right there. I know he's coming back. He's right around the corner. Serious, come out. And he's not coming back. So then he you know, chases down Bellatrix, blah, 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 all of that stuff. Gets Dumbledore's office, breaks all the shit in Dumbledore's office. He's furious. Then he comes back and he sees the mirror, mm. which, which, first of all, why wouldn't you unwrap it like well before that? Also, serious. Why the fuck didn't you just tell Harry if you want to talk to me yeah. instead of talking to me oh, to fucking oh, fire? Just use the fucking mirror that I gave you for a present. But and he Harry sees the thinks mirror. it's something even worse. So he's like, I can never do this. Seriously, get in trouble. Oh, it drives mm-hmm. me nuts. I just listened to it the other day. I was like, open it, you idiot. Yes. So he sees the mirror and he realizes that he had this line of communication to Sirius the whole yep. time. It's that so he painful. could have verified that he wasn't mm-hmm. there, that he got Sirius killed because of this. And then he still hopes that he might be able to see him. And he says, Sirius, says, Sirius, this desperation fucking throws it on the ground and he's like oh shit ghosts i'm gonna run and find nearly headless nick of course sirius is gonna come back to me he wouldn't leave me alone sirius will come back as a ghost i know he would no he won't and it's just like this repetition of uh, every time he just gets this hope and he just gets torn away from him well it's it's like harry just got handed the idea that he's gonna be a family he has his you know even though he's just his, you know, godfather, his parents picked this man. He was his best friend. Like, what an amazing moment. And, I mean, JK, man, she knows how to rip you apart. Like, everybody's story, Neville, uh, Harry's, Voldemort's, you know, even Dumbledore. Like, everybody's story is tragic. Yeah. Tragic. 
And she does such a good job at showing what happens to somebody if they go down the wrong path because of sadness or if they go down the right path uh, of acceptance and moving on. Like, it's just, it, there's so many well, interesting well, this details. Is all, this is all post. This is all oh. post the, the the war, right? The war mm -hmm. happened before this book even started. This is like the ripples of that and what the the effects of that and how to how to like put a a button on that and end it finally. So we're having so many people like you said uh like Molly, her brothers were murdered and these are things that are like generational effects that happen mm -hmm. in families that can mess you up. So it's like yeah, it's it's seeing how people deal with World War II, how families deal with that after that something like that big happens to them uh, it's it's such a well, great it's more story like world war one going into world war two right yeah going yeah, right into the next uh, one yeah you, you know, see that little bit with like uh susan bones the fellow hufflepuff where she's like oh yeah like her family was murdered mm -hmm. she's like well i kind of feel i kind of know how you feel harry like because everyone's like looking at you and prying yeah. into your life and judging you and everything and neville has bit, and such then... a like a very direct connection to <laughs> harry his parents were also not murdered by Voldemort, but maimed and, and yeah. Run, worse. Um, yeah, almost worse. They're yeah. there, but they don't know he's there. And it's, yeah. a, it's such a worse tragic story. But the, when his mother puts the, the yeah. candy, candy wrapper. wrapper in his hand and oh, he keeps it he keeps in his it. pocket. Yeah. Oh my because God. Because that's or, his only like, connection to mom. his mother. Like little and elements I, like that. You yeah. have to keep that heart in the book because that is, it's like you said earlier, Gary, it's, it's all about grief and death and learning how to handle that. And she punishes Harry. Yeah. She punishes them yeah. to the bitter end. She uh, does. Walking it, it, past the corpses of all these people who just died yeah. protecting him that he yeah. loves. Yeah. Oh, with, God, it's brutal. with Lupin and Tonks holding hands. Oh, that was... Yeah, it's yeah. he created himself and Teddy almost, you know what I mean? By them dying. Yeah. Um, what I also I want to get to know, like the characters that do die, we need to get to know some of them even better Colin in the series. Creevy. Yeah, exactly. Colin Creevy's oh, body yeah. being carried into the oh, Great Hall. That's so yeah. cool. And, um, you know, Luna, Luna is great in the movies. I, love, yeah. I think that Luna was so great perfectly actress. cast in the movies. Job. And yeah. she's um, base. And, and she is really important, you know, especially in Deathly Hollows with mm -hmm. Harry, you know, needing an escape and needing to get away for yep. a while. Her distracting And she encourages him and... to uh, cast the Patronuses. She's like, come on, we're all still here. We're all still fighting or else. And shit. Yeah. Um, she, she's an incredible character in the books and, and in the movies. Uh, so she, she, they definitely need to get her casting right. Well, uh, we got a couple big... They go to Xenophilia's house and she, yeah. she write friends over. Oh, all oh, over. Yeah. Yeah. And she gets it bad when she's in... Uh, uh, the manor? yeah the manor like they don't Dean even, Thomas. right Dean Thomas Dean like Thomas. there's so many they characters out of the movie it, it, yeah it, it's so funny Racist. that all of Racist. this Racist. like <laughs> it's so funny all of this shit gets put on JK Rowling that she's just like this fucking massive bigot all this stuff whatever we all know that's bullshit yeah she's funny. obviously very very leftist in her political beliefs and things like that but when you look at a character like Luna Luna is essentially acceptance of yourself mm -hmm. and not afraid to be weird not afraid to be different and I like that, that's like the epitome of her as a character yep. and she's so important encouraging other people to you know be themselves when they need to be and even to provide support for them or whatever yep. like the fact that in malfoy manor she is the one yep. luna uh you know 16 year old girl is the one who is getting Ollivander through this. Mm -hmm. Like she's the support for an old, obviously an older grown man. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that tells you like the heart of Luna Lovegood and just what a, what a pure cool character. Yeah. And she, you know, the beauty of her too is she, oh, and I think a lot of characters do this, but with Luna Moore, she connects to Harry on a level that others can't where, you know, her mom blew up. Um, you know, like she can, she explains death to Harry so he can accept it, you know? Sorry. No, well, no. It would be perfect. As fucking <laughs> yeah. love yes, oh, man. my God. He would be perfect. Yes. Now, the one thing we've heard going around a lot. Okay. Let me hit these two big super chats. Okay. And we're, I'm going to get to all the super chats, guys. So thank you. Let me hit these two big ones. And we want to talk about casting a little bit. All right. Ooh. Robert McDonald for $100. Thank you so much. Woo! Robert. Big super chat. The redemption arcs and three self sacrifice arcs are painfully well done. Dumbledore's sacrifice and redemption for his sister. Harry's sacrifice for everyone during the battle and Severus Snape's redemption and sacrifice for Lily and Dumbledore, the dad he wanted. 
Um, mm. Thank you very much, Robert. Mm -hmm. That's why these stories mean so much to so many people, and we we'll, why we want to see it done the right way. Can I can I just say something real quick? Someone uh, Shil Shilam Wakespear uh, says hashtag Driver Snape, like Adam Driver as Snape. What do you think? Well, I'm, we're gonna get to that okay. right after right. this super yeah. chat. <laughs> sorry, the, it's I your was, show. Run it. Sorry. Go for it. Yeah. WG for fifty dollars. Uh, well. He gave a member chat for seven months, says this one's free. And then for 50 bucks, he says this one cost me. Thank you very much, WG. And over on the Streamlabs side, WG, for another 50, WG. it appears the Las Vegas chapter of Women Haters of America is meeting exactly when the meetup is next week. Ryan, you multitasking genius. Okay. We just had to move a couple things around. It wasn't <laughs> hard. Around. We should do a joint meetup next time, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. I think there's a lot of crossover, honestly. <laughs> um, but the next thing I did want to talk about is casting. And we'll start with that one. I have seen, these are just fan stuff yeah. being thrown out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I've yeah. seen Adam Driver Snape a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. that we are at the point where we do need a character that replicates what people were used to with Alan Rickman. Uh, um, from the look to the way he speaks and everything. But a little bit more accurate to the books in terms of his age and maybe the the way he's actually depicted yeah. what do you guys think of adam driver as snape yeah the hook knows mm -hmm. i think adam driver is a really good Any actor purpose. he's got uh if you've ever seen him they tried to do it in this disney star wars movies not very well but he does have this like quiet anger, quite tortured look torturedness Rage. that he can like really do well mm -hmm. so i think he would be really he's got good a voice at, for it too yeah the deep like baritone. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure he could look like uh, a, a goth. He can go a little more goth. Can he do yeah. a British accent though? I'm oh, sure. is is that still a rule? Like she has rules and one of the rules are everyone has to be British. Well, they wouldn't make him American. That's well, no, what sure. I'm saying, all the actors have oh, to yeah, be no, British. Saying, British actors. Well, the thing is um, that changed in Fantastic Beasts because you have Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp's playing a British ac like character. Oh yeah, true. All right, this yeah. Johnny Depp, I, think, I think with certain people you can make an exception. And I he would, would be one British actors too for for like yeah all the parts. Uh, I think I think like getting a lot of unknowns. I know it's gonna be harder to do. But like people that are in <laughs> maybe the they're in the play scene. They're on stage right now. A lot of people from <clears> there. So you uh, you instead of saying sorry. oh I see Adam Driver. You read my mind. Right here, uh, William Wakespeare said Killian Murphy. Ooh, that's he's what I said. Old though, he's no, I was thinking Killian Murphy as Voldemort. That ooh, ooh, he, I think is a good. very interesting idea. It, interestingly oh, enough, for, for Rafe Fines, however the fuck you say these Welsh people's names, yeah, as uh, it's Rafe I fans. Okay, Rafe I fans. <laughs> if so, <laughs> as. He has said before uh -huh. that hey, if they ever do anything else and they need someone to play Voldemort, they better fucking call me. Now, he nah, may have been talking about awesome. something else, but um, he would be freaking brilliant. But he has said that, and he has had J.K. Rowling's back multiple yeah, times, that's true. very yeah. publicly. Um, Voldemort is actually supposed to be a little older. Born um, in like 40 something, I want right? The red eyes. He'd be better than red he eyes. was with Xenophilius. Could he have a nose? <laughs> he was, you know uh, what? The guy who no. played young uh, Tom Riddle in Half Blood Prince is actually. Rapes uh, nephew, Son. Or nephew or something. Oh, no, I thought it was nephew. nephew. nephew? Whatever, relative. So he could actually be a Tom Riddle right. when he's older because he's like 20 or something now. Or he, yeah, could, play, he, was... or he could play his dad in flashbacks. Mm. Uh, but I think, look, yeah, Vol that would be cool, but I think Voldemort, I actually think that Killian Murphy, he's, he's the dude from uh, Peaky Blinders, right? Yeah. Okay. I just think that dude is intense. He's a great, I yeah. just think he would be like, he would bring something else out in Voldemort that I don't think Fines touched on. Fines was very, you know, he was very, I don't know. Flamboyant. Fluid. Yeah, but like, I want to see man. that. Like when he's like doing like, you know, blows up that shield, that's one moment where you see him really pissed off, but like Killian Murphy can hold it in and then release it. I just think he just, I think he'd be the perfect Voldemort. I just, I can't think of anybody else. Tom Hiddleston, Sirius Black. Ooh. Yes. You have my Is he too old like, though? Write that down. I don't think so. I don't think so. He's, he's probably what, he's 40. late 30s. So you need somebody yeah, but he who looks younger. Yeah, he's got he does, a young he, look. he could look a little younger. So the age ranges you're looking for are people yeah. who can appear at season 1 as Lucius they're in their Malfoy. 
Bring back Tom, Tom Felton. Felton. I have heard be a better have Lucius heard, Malfoy. He does I have, have that, heard like, that multiple times. Tom Felton yeah. is Lucius Malfoy. He would be about the right age because Lucius Felton, should be a little older, four years older than Snape because yep. yep. he was a mm -hmm. prefect when Snape got sorted in the pensive. Yep. So he's in his thirties now. So he yeah, and work. and he has that arrogant thing. Like I mean, look at early uh, Loki. He has that arrogant thing about him. I think that would be good. I think we're going back and forth between. I've Tom's seen some here. people yeah. saying Sir Ian Tom McKellen Bell. as Dumbledore. Oh. Who? Sir Ian. Sir Ian McKellen. He's a bit old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta have somebody who can make it. That he's means. already yeah. Gandalf. Yeah, he's already been Gandalf. I like Peter. He's Capaldi. been all these. He's been. Exactly. I'm, I'm Team Peter Capaldi for. for I think that is cool. a great idea. Yeah. That's a great choice. I can't really see him with a big beard, though, Peter. Peter can I, Peter can can do he's can really he do like the love. and he can do the love mellow That's thing like and then like do. on those rare occasions that they kind of missed and like when when he does get mad he mm. scare the crap out of you. Like that, eyes, yeah. yeah, that's that's what he's. You know, remember, there's like two, uh, only two or three times in the books where Dumbledore gets really freaking pissed yeah, to the point pissed where they're off. like, Oof, okay. N then you can see the power, cool. and it's like, okay, we get why this guy's a badass yeah. now. Yeah. Or what about Lashana Lynch? Uh, <laughs> Lash well, I heard the chat saying Lizzo would be the fat lady. So <laughs> that's your race swap. There you go. That's the race swap. They can race swap the fat Gets lady. drunk and everything. Yeah, sure. <laughs> now, Sir Duggan, that's something I want to see in this show. Or Sir, Sir Duggan. Duggan. I Sir love Duggan. that character. I want to see Sir Duggan. Is awesome. I want to see him. Yeah. yeah, he's all in the deleted scenes in Prince of Yeah, he's, he's, he's in the background. You can he's see in him in the background. TV version that you yep. can mm -hmm. see. It's on Peacock. It's on Peacock. HBO Max does not have. Those Dogs. extended editions. Oh, so you watched this right extended now. on Peacock? On Peacock. Yes. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. And it has, it kind of sucks because it has like fade to blacks when they go into commercials. Yeah. It's commercial <laughs> breaks. I can um, deal with it. I can deal with it. But it's it's the TV edits basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think that one of the most difficult ones to nail down are going to be people who have died like, like Hagrid, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. With Robbie Coltrane passing away, and with him just being, I think, a perfect Hagrid. The, part, the um, best. Like, that's going to be a tough yeah. one to replace. Seth Rogen. Elba. <laughs> no, no oh. Gary, no! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Rogen. what did Gary say? I no. Said, I said he Seth said Rogen. Seth Rogen. No, no. Seth Rogen, I'm joking. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it would have that super. Did anybody uh, like a lot of people back a while back? Uh, I always say his name wrong. I Idris Alba as Dumbledore. Idris Alba. Uh, Idris Alba. Idris. What's that again? Say it. I, if, I, just... I, if I am pronouncing things better Idris. than you, Scott, that's dude. I'm a I'm a rip off version of you, and I I have dyslexia. Okay. That, that doesn't mean you can't speak. It means you have trouble reading. Okay. <laughs> Why did you have to call me out on that? I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyways, that guy. As a uh, Dumbledore, as we pronounce it. Dumbledore. Dumbledore. <laughs> so other. Th Thanks well, for having me. Let's talk about that, I guess. Other I'm than. Sure. Wait, Ricky Gervais is Hagrid? Oh. <laughs> when he said Mark Addy, and I think that that is. That yeah, is. that's. That's a more spot on casting. Right. In my Sean opinion. Bean is Hagrid. Sean Bean has to be somebody who dies. Uh, yeah. Right. Sean, Dumbledore, then. Sean Bean is Cedric Diggory. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> who was the Addy guy? I, black. He would be a good serious black if he was younger. But uh, mm. who did you say somebody Addy? I don't know that. Mark Addy. Mark Addy. Can we do yeah. Andrew Garfield in a in a role? What would he be good in? Serious Black, Ramus Lupin. Serious Black, uh, yeah. Yeah. Lupin. No, no, Lupin. I think Jane, Lupin. James. Why don't they just do a show in the water? Oh, oh there you James go, Potter. James Potter. Yeah, he's a yes. old though, isn't he? Forgive me for oh, the he's like young, late thirties, but he yeah, looks he, young. Yeah, he looks like a baby. That's, to me, that's a waste of James Garfield as a character, though, because how many? The only time you're gonna see flashback. twenty-one a, year old James I think Potter Lupin. is Make in a Lupin. flashback of Perry of the night he dies. He yeah, could be like, Lupin. And excuse like me for the Addy mistake. So that I you can get like a major actor who does not have to commit for seven seasons. Yeah, so you right. want to be James Potter? Right. Yeah. yeah. And a right. Flashback. A couple flashbacks. Where would you put David Tennant or like Matt Smith? Ooh, That'd David Tennant. Fun. He get was in all. the movies, but yeah, that'd be great. Still a little David old. David Tennant coming yeah. back. David Tennant's too old, and he probably would have been a good Snape when he was younger. Yeah. Mm. Oh hell yeah. Wasn't he? Well, he was. What's his name? Barty Crouch, right? Yeah. 
Barty Crouch Jr. Yeah. Who could be a Mad Eye? Ooh. They got to get um, like, his I, son I love... who played Bill Weasley in the movie. Because they're oh. the same, really. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Like, but I didn't, I was not a big fan, although I love the actor. I was not a big fan of Mad Eye's depiction in the movies. No, um, you're right, because he because he wasn't supposed to be the big fat guy. <laughs> He's right. okay, yeah. really yeah. skinny and grizzled. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like a yeah. Veteran. when I think He's of a guy like going around tracking dark wizards, I don't look at a guy who's just super fucking know. fat. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I look at a guy who, to me, Mad Eye should almost be skinnier than is healthy. Because yeah. he's the mm -hmm. only thing on his mind is like fighting. Evil. He doesn't like, eat anything really. Yeah, so and he only he eats does. stuff that he prepares himself. And yeah, I just don't. I just don't see him getting super fat. So. Hot take. Hot take. Barty Crouch probably one of uh, Harry's best teachers, maybe the best. Well, yeah, yeah. he actually learned stuff. Yeah, I think we. I, when you go back and you reread Goblet of Fire with the knowledge that Mad Eye Moody is mm -hmm. Barty Crouch Jr., a lot of things make sense and mm -hmm. you can piece together. Yeah. There's some things that I don't know. Like, did Barty Crouch Jr. really need to spend an hour teaching Harry how to perfectly uh, protect himself from the Imperious Curse? Right. Maybe not the best idea in the grand scheme of things. I, I think but. what I like to think is Barty did kind of like Harry. Mm -hmm. I think he had, a, like, uh, there was something, you know, like a respect there. Like, oh, I'm, still lead, I'm still leading you as a lamb to slaughter, but I like this kid. Yeah, like, he's <laughs> intrigued. <laughs> you know? Like, how did you live and yeah. all that? What's what, what's, yeah. how, what, what are you good at, you know, training him and everything? He was yeah. really good in his performance, we'll just say. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, so Hagrid, definitely Addy. I, I think that's a great one. What about McGonagall? I mean, there is a McGonagall in Fantastic Beasts, but she's really young. I don't even know why she's in I'm, that movie in the first so, place. So, if you've seen, I don't know the actress's name, but if you've seen um, uh, Peaky Blinders, the aunt, you know, the aunt that, she's yeah. an awesome actress. I think she would she, be a great McGon M McGonagall. Wait, the one that, like, runs the, the family? Yeah. Yes. She passed away. Oh, she did? Yeah, yeah I believe so, if we're talking about the same person. Oh, she was we, Narcissus. In she the, was Narcissus. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. She, she, she died. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know she died. That sucks. She Is that like why she wasn't too. in the last Fantastic. season? Dude, okay. Nurse that makes sense. Malfoy was hot. Yeah. I'm just going to come out and say it. No, I'm with Except you. Except with her skunk hair. No, no I'm, I take I'm it. Skunk hair. She had a nice oh. rack. I take it. Okay. Someone <laughs> said she died. Yeah. She did. She, wow. did. she passed away. Yeah, she, she, passed was away. In, she was in Doctor Who season 11, too. Yeah. She was like a vampire thingy, wasn't she? Great actress. Great actress. Yeah, really good. Uh, well, then you got like there's so many major characters. Like you have to have a look at how iconic Bellatrix Ooh, is. Gillian Anderson as Narcissa Ooh. Malfoy. That would be cool. Yeah, she's hot. Yeah, she like, Gary still gets his hotness and all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm with you on that, Gary. We need a hot meter for Draco's mom. You know. I, well, I I saw people. I, sorry, I was looking at the chat for a second. Uh, Luna Lovegood, Ivana Lynch, is that her name? Yeah. As Narcissa. I don't oh. think she can play an evil. I, I like think it would be so weird for her to see. Or I think it would be so weird to see that for yeah, her character I, of Luna to be playing Narcissa. I don't think she can do enough it. older now. I mean, to, to yeah. Kind of off. like the Tom Felton thing. He looks different enough from Draco. Oh, yeah, he's totally he different, play a different I personally think they're not going to touch any actor from the original. I don't think so either. No, unless just it's like a cameo and they're under prosthetics. And no, because Emma, Emma Watson, like, there's sources... My sources. Keep that bitch away from this. Get she's telling. Out. She's telling everyone to stay away from it. There's there's rumors going around that she's in the background calling all the Potter like alum and saying don't be a don't get involved in this at all. Like what a what a bitch. What a I'm bitch. sorry. She gave them Miller advice. They were friends. Who knows yeah. what rumors are are not true? Right. As we've seen Grain from of salt. Well, my sources said that uh, she sounds vegan. <laughs> Well, yeah, have she you said seen a picture she came of her? out and said she eats plants now the other day on her birthday. I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't think anyone actually cares what you're doing. Uh, <sighs> they're so important. They're so important in our lives. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bill Skarsgård has got to be in it somewhere. Oh. Ooh. Get all the scars. Well, the is, you be one not, of the yeah, Death Eaters. Like, uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult to get big name actors to, to commit. To that's ten why, years. Yeah, that's why I think well, seasoned seasoned stage actors from like the, yeah. the London stage scene 
could be a really good thing to do because then you would see the character and not necessarily the big actor. Like, sure, like for Dumbledore or something like these bigger characters, but like well, filling out the cast with some really talented fair, actors. With the d- new diversity and inclusion initiatives, a lot of white British actors are going to be kind of out of work if they're, unless they're playing yeah. bad guys in Star Wars. So you might That's be true. able to get them. You might get them. Yeah. Like the other, uh, the Scarsgar from Northman being uh, Draco's dad. Oh, Lucius? Yeah, Lucius. Uh, not Bill, but the other one. The uh, one from uh, True Blood, Scarsgar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one from he, the Northmen. Yeah. Yeah. That's not Bill, is it? No, that's Alexander. Uh, Alexander, Alexander, thank you. Scarsgar. I'm really good at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see a couple of people talking about, um, like, for the kids. Honestly, I don't know any, I don't know the names of any 10 or 11 year old actor. And quarter Black's like, right, too. It just, needs to be. Nobody. Slaps for Hermione. Need... Just put me in there, okay? Yeah, it just needs black. to be nobody. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, what if I identify difficult. as black? Does that count? Yeah, uh, maybe. But Quarter Black was right. With the kids, all the kids, they need to be nobodies. Like, just... Yeah. Just... And it worked well. I think yeah. that's all they can be. Like, at right. McGonagall. Age. Emma Thompson. McGonagall. Oh, but that's she a was uh, Trelawney already. Trelawney. Yeah, yeah, she yeah but she's... Trel- Trelawney's such yeah, a... The thing is, they've like, already got all the British character. actors in the movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She's, all, she's a different age and she's going to be definitely a different character. She's going to be dressed differently than McGonagall uh, than Trelawney. So I think she could be good. That's yeah, going to be going through all these characters, like these actors. Who's uh, who would be good. Oh uh, Weiss. What's her name? Weiss. Um, she could uh, play. Yeah. What? Uh, Weiss. From Rachel mummy. Weiss? From the mummy. Yeah, Rachel, Rachel, yeah, White. Yeah, yeah. Rachel Weiss. Weiss. Oh. I mean, She's she's yeah. a Mommy, little bit older, but she's gorgeous. She could play, you know, um, one of the teachers or something like that. Yeah, hot. Fuck, you, who who do you want her to play? You just brought her name up randomly. Uh, she she's could be the. Uh, radar she, radar she's thing. really pretty. She could play one of the Way teachers. Over here. What fucking teacher in Hogwarts you, would you describe as? Oh, she was described as very pretty. You know what, Obviously Ryan? I got you fucking halfway there. Can you help me with this? Wait, uh, no. <laughs> where could she be the one that uh, teaches them um, broom? Uh, Madame flying, Madame Hooch? Hooch? Man- yeah. Why not? She's not really in the even the books as much. Okay, I screwed that one. I just want a hot Pomfrey. Yeah. yeah. No. Um. Oh, oh yeah. What's her name? She's like a nurse. Ross. Oh, yeah. oh, Rosmerda. Rosmerda. Yes. Ah, yeah. yes. You could have Rachel Weisz play her because yeah. she's a little bit older, right? Okay. Deal. You Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, guys. I'm just like thinking of all the female teachers of Hogwarts. Like you just want to fuck all the teachers from Hogwarts, Scott. Dude, yeah, tell yeah. me that wouldn't be dope. Like, she's like, you know, Strokus Immensus. And I'm like, whoa. In Gorgio. You know? In Gorgio. Yeah, there's, exactly. there's a spell for that. Yeah. Lastus <laughs> Longus, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, you don't know. Have you ever had sex on the back of a broom? Well, no, I want to try it. Yeah, that's a good Moving question. Pat. Who would play Bellatrix? Oh, that's going to be a hard one. Though. I almost put Rachel Weiss there. I was just about to say somebody that. yeah. that's got to be like unhinged a little bit. Yeah. How how old is she supposed to be, though? She's a like she's Sirius's younger age. Yeah, I think she's a yeah. similar in age to Sirius. Maybe. Yeah, yeah a no, little bit. Younger. She's uh, the same age, probably around Lucius Malfoy, because Lucius marries Narcissa. Wasn't, wasn't Narcissa a little bit younger? I Bellatrix? don't know what the order of the three sisters. So it's Bellatrix, Narcissa, and uh, Andromeda. Andromeda. Yeah, whatever yeah. her name is, Andromeda. Andromeda. That's what I always pronounced it when I was a kid. Now I can't change it. Eva Green. Eva Andromeda. Green's got that like kind of Eva screw, Green. Ooh, screw Eva loose. Green would be. She's got that screw. So that's a great. No, no, yeah. she is legit crazy in real life. Yeah, so she's, that's she's crazy. That's a got those one. eyes, you know, those big eyes. Yeah, Eva Green. You also, you got Wait, the girl. Where would you want Florence Pugh, Gary? Or you, she's she could play a house elf because she's like yeah. four foot two. Yeah, she's you know. pretty small. She can yeah. play Winky. Winky, yeah, she can play Winky. <laughs> she can motion capture for Winky. There's Florence Pugh. Um, we, we do need we we kind of skipped over this. We need more Dobby in this. We said house elves in general. Hell yeah, in there general. There needs to be more Dobby. Dobby is such an important him? character to so much stuff. And mm-hmm. um, would you bring him back? What's it, Toby Jones? Well, yeah, I mean, that, Goblet that's, of Fire. That's another thing you're missing. Right. Goblet of Fire, you place yeah. him with Neville for the gillyweed. Right. Um, yeah. The Room of Requirement uh, was Dobby as well, mm-hmm. right? Yes. A lot was taken seven away. Books. He was not in one or three, but he was two, four, five, six, seven. Right. And he was only in two movies, correct? Correct. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
technically he was in the the last, but not the really. Last one. Yeah, and that I mean that is you know whatever your complaints are about the movies, that scene to end on that for Deathly mm. Hollows part one was mm. brutal. Uh, I think the the acting from Radcliffe there is really good as well. You can't say that for a ton of the series, but um, for that moment, I thought it was really good. And, and, and of course, and Luna played a big part in that too. Yeah. She did, and and a lot of that part was inner monologue that they had to translate that you were talking about earlier. Where, where Harry's like, "No, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use magic. I'm gonna dig this hole. I'm digging the hole. I'm digging the hole." And uh, dig. yeah, Daniel Radcliffe did really well in those two moments when Dobby died and mm. when Cedric Diggory died and he came back, they came mm. back and he's back. He's back. Yep. Voldemort's back. And he was like right there on, I thought those two scenes were really well done. Goblet Gosh. of Fire to me is uh, the pacing of that movie is terrible. I feel All like everybody's moving too fast. Yep. Like even in, I don't know if it was deleted or not, uh, but in the scene where Snape is talking to Karkaroff during the ball and yeah. he's going around the different carriages, getting yeah, people deleted. out of there, he's moving so quickly and he's very, uh, it's just like so out of character. I yep. feel like people are almost running to do things in that movie. And um, that I, that is probably, I think, the season that will be like the most well-loved be- if they do that right. Because you get Quidditch World Cup you get so much uh, stuff for yeah. each make it two seasons well what i think you can do they have the flexibility to do this yeah. is okay sorcerer's stone eight episodes chamber of secret eight episodes prisoner of azkaban eight episodes goblet of fire 10 yeah, you know order the phoenix more? 10 yeah, yeah, yeah. blood prince maybe six right deathly yeah. hollows maybe 12 12 yeah. like you, you have the capability to do things like that if you want um with the way that they're doing it and with the episodic storytelling and I think yep. they should take advantage of that. So they not feel like they're forced or, or pinned into anything or have to stretch anything out. Well, if kinda, you think that Sorcerer's Stone should be six or seven, maybe you do six or seven. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like um, Gary with uh, House of the Dragon. Like they did so much in that first season and it's not that long of a, you know, Dance of Dragons is only what, a mm-hmm. year and a half long. So like, you know, like that first season could have been a couple more, but they just didn't know what they were going to you know, get from the fans. So if you go into this, like we're going to nail it with, you know, the first season and allow the show to um, dictate like how many episodes, because I think you could easily do 12 for um, most of the last four books, like 12 episodes each. I mean, you could really do that for almost every single one. There's so much they left out. It's unbelievable. And another actress, Natalie Dormer. She's hot. So are, you just na- are you just naming attractive radar. actresses? Guess what? This is this takes place in the fucking UK, okay? Okay. Like they're not that right. great. She, like a she random is, sampling of people. She and is gonna be the best looking people in the world. Okay. Well, you're she's a you know a witch. She can't do something. A little polyjuice make herself hot. I'm sorry. My Poly fault. Just changes you into somebody else. Yeah. Well, guess what? She, she can could. change herself into Natalie Dorman. <laughs> okay. I think you're simping a little bit right there. Sorry, no. Sorry, Narcissa. I think she could play Narcissa. She's got she she's could got do that, that kind of villainous. Who would play Tonks? Streak. Ooh. Uh the girl, the girl from uh, Birdie. I Tonks, can't. Tonks will most definitely be race swapped. Oh, you think? Uh, she can change a, her appearance at will. Yeah. Yeah. So she's uh, actually just doing it so she gets into right. a better college. And one Teddy day she's <laughs> Asian, one day she's black. You never know. Yeah. That was good, but uh, what she didn't have great grades, so she really had to she scrape by. She scraped by to be an aura. She was a diversity hire. And <laughs> Tonks is younger, right? She's yeah, and, yeah, like much younger. So you could go with like uh, Sorosa Ronan. Sersha? Yeah, that her too. Ronan. Yeah, her. Thing She's is, hot. Though, the thing is, like right now, Tonks doesn't get introduced until <laughs> uh, Order of Phoenix, right? right. So. Mm-hmm. You're talking about seven years from yeah, now. Yeah, that's true. Who is going to make, you know, with all the production, like who's going to make the first appearance as Tonks? So an actor that you're thinking of at the age right now might not necessarily that's be. True. That's true. It might just be a nobody again, like they did last time with Natalia Ten. I mean, she was kind of, uh, she was kind of known. She was in a few movies. Game of Thrones. But... Game of Thrones. She yeah, was but that awesome. was before she She's was in. John Wick Four too. She is she? Because yeah. she was in the Mandalorian. She was in that movie with um, Hugh Grant. Where is she in John Wick 4? Hugh Grant, what could he do? Where is she, the girl who played Tonks? Yeah. She's the Russian, like, sister. Yeah, he, he, go, goes, he has to go back. Oh, my God, I didn't even realize that. Ceremony. Yeah. Oh, wow. Who plays Gilderoy Lockhart? 
Ooh, who I think yeah. is one of the best castings that they did for this. Like, yeah. our none in Chamber of Secrets. He is he's awesome. He's yeah, just he's hammy enough. Uh, he's he's great. Hiddleston would be good at that, or like a Tom. Like you want, he, he's a little older, right? So like not like a Tom Holland or someone like that. I would imagine Gilderoy Lockhart is probably in his thirties. Ezra Miller, what? No. Uh, somebody. Uh, somebody like a little bit less cute than like Chris Hemsworth, but like Chris Hemsworth would totally be able to pull off that brother. attitude and everything. That crazy. Henry Cavill. <laughs> Hemsworth, like actually Hemsworth might not be the worst. He be right, like he's kind of new yeah, for Lockhart. Can, can, he can be like funny and goofy, you know what yes, I mean? He just needs to lose be. a lot of muscle and be like a like. Yeah, well, you're will, putting him, you're putting him in a wizard Thor robe. So yeah, he's not Thor. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. Steroids for Thor anymore, so he's going to go back down to normal. Yeah. He's normal sold him to Natalie. God, so many good stuff, guys. Hey, everybody in the stream, thank you for being you're here. We got 23 it. people watching. I'm gonna start getting through some of these super chats because I know we've got some questions coming our way in these two. Um, Silver screen psychopathy for 10. I got Hogwarts for my kid after watching for a bit our Hogwarts Legacy. I got sucked right back into the magic of the whole thing, the visuals, the music. Then took over, and I'm around 80% finished. Burn, Disney, burn. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Uh, Tat Tatsusama for two with a little uh, freaking rock star thing. And uh, cheers. Thank you. Big Mike. Big Mike Obama. Good to see you here, buddy, for two. 100K if you take a bubble bath with Dylan Mulvaney. For 100K? Up it a little bit. Uh, but you know, you never know. Make it a million. I, if if you have, if I can be fully clothed and he can be fully clothed. Um, I'll think about it. Um, Bill Sotherby becomes a channel member and then gives five memberships. Thank you, Bill. Ventus Bruma for five to make Harry Potter more diverse than the movies. Give POC characters already in the story parts they should, aka Dean and Malfoy Manor in Deathly Angela Hollows. Johnson. That's a good question. So yeah, some Jordan. of these characters, you do have diversity in the Harry Potter universe. Uh, you have Angelina Johnson. You have Dean Thomas. You have Lee Jordan. You have the uh, you have the Patel twins. You have these characters Joe, that exist. Yeah. Um, yeah. What would you like to see from some of those characters that you didn't necessarily get in the movies? Well, yeah. We, uh, uh, one of those twins dies too. So there. No. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Are you sure? He's dead. Nope, she doesn't die. No, none of the twins no, die. Dies. It's assumed that Lavender well, Brown dies. Well, in the book, in Lavender the book, Brown dies. Yeah. Lavender Brown dies. I think it's assumed that they don't yeah. actually stay. She's like feebly stirring, so who knows? But in Pottermore accidentally wrote down she died. But then when people are like, "Oh my gosh, she actually did die," they remove that from the okay. website. Well, um, in the movie, they show one of the sisters dead. Yep. Yeah. No, because one that's of the it. actresses isn't in the last movie. They uh, killed uh, Lavender Brown for real in the movie. Sure. I I'm swear sure they're pointing the Patel twins. Try, I'm going to trust, trust Yeah, they're no, like because one of the thing. actresses is not in the last movie. Like she's completely out of the movie. She like that's why they were I covering her. She was dead. Covering her because she died. No, yeah. Lavender Brown dies. The other girl, the other Patel, okay. the one in there is actually covering her head. Agreed to disagree. Covering, is it covering uh, Lavender? Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, she getting eaten too. Yeah, yeah she, she got. She got. She got you know, bits and pieces. Yeah, Padma officially. Padma and Pavarti both live five okay um one of already marries dean thomas actually yeah and, Wait, and you know what yeah that's okay. true well hey what uh, blabs whatever happened to uh jk rowling's harry potter encyclopedia that she promised right i after, know after i'm it. it's been 84 years joe yeah and i know also, nothing about it in in cursed child was it ron mary girl. padma yeah it's yeah. fucked man um, in, in, and, like, in the, the kids don't even exist in the alternate universe i um, still haven't like read that I'm or watched reading. it you shouldn't it's yeah. miserable it's oh. it's awful like uh, the idea that that voldemort would have sex yeah. is stupid right and yeah, he has a kid or something Delphi. right that's him and bellatrix Delphi. even though what one drunk night was not pregnant ever yeah. at any point in the books um and then gets killed. visibly or otherwise like yeah it wouldn't have happened right. um and if it did happen I don't think they would have destroyed every single fucking character's arc um, and like traveled Cedric. back in time to every single movie. To Yeah, the idea that Cedric would become a Death Eater just because he lost to Harry. So stupid. Like, Joan didn't even happen. write it. She just stamped her name on it. It was like, yep, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no way. I, I, heard a th out. I heard a theory recently. I'm sorry. If am I Is this okay that I say it, Ryan? I don't want to you know, screw it. It depends me. on what the theory is. I'll okay, after. there's a theory for... Um, for uh goblet of fire that because i always wondered why the the uh, cup goes to the graveyard but then 
the cup is able to go back to the starting line because usually they can only go right. one place. Yeah. The the newest theory I heard was that Voldemort planned for Harry to win, gets Harry there, uses his blood, kills Harry, uses a polyjuice, comes back as Harry, and then as Ooh. Harry kills Dumbledore. I've because, seen that theory video as well. But um, Dumbledore is his biggest idea. threat, you know. And, and it, it, there, I mean, there is it's a theory, so who knows? Yeah. But um, I would. I would wonder if you can actually use polyjuice potion for someone who's dead. Because yeah, why not? the reason I asked that is because when Barty Crouch uses polyjuice potion for Mad Eye, right? He doesn't he's not just like healthy Mad Eye, he's Mad Eye in the exact condition that he is with a lost leg with a fucked up eye, all this yeah. shit. And so short hair I actually and think that there's there's got to be oh, something yeah. and he wouldn't keep like, him associated alive. with like the magical gene in you. That replicates well, yeah, exactly what you are alive too. Yeah, so yeah. He he kept him alive the entire time, so he you have to keep him alive. It also it's takes like a month to brew, so yeah, forget that. Yeah. It, otherwise, yeah. you could just cut off somebody's hair, kill them, and just keep their hair, and then make. Yeah, I never thought of that. You're right. He, it it does have to. That has to be the effect because I always wonder why he kept him alive. Well, I mean, I he's one of the could, biggest threats. Like you could justify keeping Mad Eye alive to continue to get your hair from him because you don't know how long you have to keep this act up. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's how it's actually used. It's how they explain it. But I just personally think from everything I've seen that you could not, I don't think you could use polyjuice potion of someone who is dead. No. Yeah. I don't think it'd work. There still is an interesting idea of, the, of them planning to revive Voldemort and bringing him to Hogwarts immediately. Like I'm revived. I'm at full power. Let's teleport. Cause you can't apparate into the grounds of Hogwarts, right. but you, you right. can, if you set up a, Port key. Yeah. Right. So he he turns right back into Hogwarts and then kills Catches everybody. him off guard. The idea. Or you just send a dead body, like dead Harry, back yeah. with the port key and be like, oh my well, god, no, what because he's just no. back dead. He would he never would want well that I guess, but Voldemort's biggest fear was Dumbledore realizing he was back. Exactly. And with, so and dead Harry, Harry, you know no nothing right. how it would happen. And, and with Harry living, that killed everything for him. Mm -hmm. So like but port keys are only supposed to work one way. They're not, they don't go three different, like they don't have design to do that. So no, because in Fantastic Beasts, in the second one, they travel and then the porky goes back. He's like, leave the bucket because Jacob was holding it. And then it zooms back to wherever it was. They're like, all right. It's like one, a, one, B, two, location, one, two. Right? Yeah. 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 Not three. That's all. I'm. Yeah. Sorry. It's probably yeah. just kind of like a train back and forth. Um, and I, I think again, with some of these theory videos, just like star Wars, sometimes we, we end up getting so much more into it than it was ever it. intentionally and mm -hmm. like supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. I do well, think there's a little too much polyjuice potion being used in the Harry yeah. Potter universe, just in general. I just will say that like, okay, we did it. And first of all, Hermione can fucking brew it right. as a very advanced yep. second year, but come the fuck on. Right. Um, but then to continue to use it throughout multiple books. Okay. Mad eye. Barty Crouch Jr. got it. But then not only does Harry, Ron, Hermione use it multiple times in Deathly Hollows, but also fucking Draco and his buddies were using it mm -hmm. to fix the to fix the vanishing cabinet. So it's like a little too much polyjuice potion in this universe. Well, also time out. turners should never have been invented. That's why she destroyed them all. And it was a good yeah. idea to destroy yeah. them all. Mm -hmm. Um and I think I think Prisoner of Azkaban, the way that they did time travel in that is incredibly well done in yeah. terms of time travel in yep. books. But it was a it's contained a, what a, a contained thing, and there were very big rules that they established yep. for it, so they couldn't just go in and change a bunch of things. That thing was really well done. Mm -hmm. Um, where am I? Dakota White becomes a channel member. Thank you, Ryan Spinnell for five. Says Blabs Hard Eyes. Hello, Hayden for twenty. Just don't forget, J.K. is also also an insane woke person. It was her that retroactively made Dumbledore gay. I'm worried about retroactive changes popping up all over the place in a series. Don't know if she can stay true. Well, we talked about that a little bit already about the Dumbledore. I, I don't I don't know if she had Dumbledore gay from the beginning. I'm not going to pretend like I know that. I do think that when, by the time she was writing uh, Deathly, Deathly Hollows, I think mm -hmm, she made she the decision to have that between him and Grindelwald. Um, I don't think she's going to make him openly gay because she says it's no going to be very specific and his gayness has nothing to the first story, really. It no. doesn't. Yeah, right. It doesn't affect anything like no. except for his early years. Like sex isn't that important in the Harry Potter world, people. Especially when you're 100 years old. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> but I don't, maybe he'll maybe he'll try to Dalai Lama Harry. Who knows? Ah! Um, DMTV. Hey, suck on my wand. Uh, <laughs> DMTV <laughs> two for one nine nine. It's gonna be a flop, Ryan. I love you. Be safe. Safe. I'm fine. Um, CJ. If anything, 10, it's definitely not gonna be a flop. I think it's gonna definitely do some beginning. numbers. Who knows if it's gonna be good or not? That's the question. It's gonna be content. But if they get like uh, you know Pakistani feminist documentarians to to be the showrunners uh, then we people can, are tuning uh, in just to see what the fuck is gonna they happen get somebody from bad robot you know oh, that, then the red red flags will be up they get Damon lindel off to write harry oh, potter geez. yeah it's, bad. it's gonna be bad but she's she's involved that's the only reason like i didn't know that until you guys said that so that's the glimmer of hope she she protects this world so i can't see her allowing them to destroy it um, we went into Rings I mean, of Power the same child. way. We went into Rings of Power the same way. Said, "This is this could be cool. We'll wait for wait for more information." Then more information came, and we go, "Okay, red flag, red flag, red flag," and it gets worse and worse. And then when it comes out and it's total shit, and they, oh, you just hate it to hate it. You didn't even know it was gonna suck. We watched the development of it. Yeah, well, we we also lived our lives and watched Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, Marvel, Con all, all of these other go to trash. Rip. And they were just following the same script, so it's not like we're nerds, Stradamus. Yeah. We be <laughs> fucking easy to figure out. Yeah, yeah. There point. was a pattern. And a lot I, of flags. I made videos because I didn't want the Tolkien fandom to get involved in this bullshit, like that we that we saw with Star Wars in the beginning. Uh, little did I know that they were the best fandom out there, and they could just bitch slap the access mm. and everybody. So else. smart, Amazon. Oh, well done. Harry Potter fandom's a bit fucked. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, there's a lot it's of really weirdos. Sad. Well, Dude, I'll... you should see some of the stuff they make for like pins, like fan art. It's like naked Harry and Draco and all that. I'm like, these are teenagers, and you're making them have sex. Deviant art and Tumblr and everything. Like, fuck that. Yeah, it's it's luckily, like Gary said in the beginning, J.K. Rowling's opinions have driven <laughs> so, like... a significant portion of those <laughs> types of people out of the fandom. Luckily enough, mm. um, Sifter. The purge. <laughs> well, I before we get to a couple more of these super chats, I this is a big question. What do they do in terms of how Hogwarts looks, the the way the costumes look, the robes, the music? Has are they going to try to keep it as similar as possible to the movies? Yep. Yes. Or are they going to do the opposite and try to separate a little bit? I, I, I think, think they because have of to. the parks. I yep. think I think exactly. they might go a little different, but the robes got everything's got to look the same because of the parks and the merchandising, and you don't you just don't need to change it. This it was and the music is there great. already. Yeah, I don't you, think you, it'll be exactly the same. But with. like we yeah, talked you, about you, on you, Friday Night Tights, like like, well, like in Hogwarts Legacy, you make Hogwarts the music Legacy like that. exactly. It's just mm -hmm. very John Williams esque because John Williams doesn't do the music for the whole film series. Right, right. He, he does the first two and first three. Yeah, first three. I think that the. I think that the, the the composers, the people who do the scores for the movies, do a really good job of feeding off each other's stuff mm -hmm. and, and, Andrews, and using things uh, that happened before in in big moments. And to end Deathly Hallows Part Two with the big massive swell to end with the John Williams. Oh, I, know, I is, tried. They got a, they got a new composer because uh, they had the same composer for, I believe it was for for five and six and five seven and, six, and eight. And, and then same. they get, they got a new one for seven and eight, who mm -hmm. was way more bummed back because it was like really muted in mm -hmm. in uh in five and six for sure. Yeah, but like this guy, it's the more guy harps in five and six. It was way better uh for Deathly Hallows. But, that, that, but and I, if you notice cool. in the Hogwarts Legacy game, they actually use some of the other composers besides John Williams. Like even like Fantastic mm -hmm. Beasts, you hear a little bit of themes in the Hogwarts Legacy game, which I think is like. So, so they have to do that with the show as well. Like take the elements that we mm -hmm. that we know as Harry Potter, and make something new, but still within that whimsical. same kind it's of gotta be whimsical. design language yeah it's also knows. it's also a, a dated thing it's the 90s you know so like i what i did like after christopher uh chris columbus or uh the next i don't know if it was the next director or the one following that started showing the kids with their ties off to the side and alfonso. alfonso it was alfonso right okay so alfonso did a fantastic job at showing kids being actually kids so i i would like to actually see more of they're they're kids. They're not just wizards. They're they're mm -hmm. '90s kids. So I would like to see a little bit more 
of and that. And it's important that, like, even though it's timeless for the movies, it's got to be in the 90s. It has yeah. to be. Yes. Yep. With the big, like, TVs that you see. Yeah, even no if cell phones. You see the TV and everything yeah. is dated. I yeah, mean, you don't Dudley get all of his gifts. Like they've got to be nineties right. accurate. That would be right. Great. Last Instead year, of like thirty six, every kid sitting at the uh, you know uh, Gryffindor table is just on their cell phone. You know, like you can't do that. It has to be the nineties. It has to be pre social media. Cell phones won't work. And yeah, they that. don't work. Technology. Oh, that's work. true. That's Technology right. It always falls. No apart. Game Boys. Yeah, yep. um, that's right. But yeah, like back to the composer Bastards. thing. I I do think I mentioned it earlier. The the I don't know if you want to call it humble or whatever, but there are a lot of composers that if they're doing their thing, they would want to fucking do their song in a moment. And to me, in Snape's the big reveal for Snape, when you have him sitting there crying, holding Lily's body with baby Harry screaming in the background in slow motion. Oh. And instead of writing a new song, instead of doing something, they altered Dumbledore, Dumbledore's farewell mm -hmm. that big powerful sad string song and it just worked mm -hmm. it just worked so fucking beautifully in that moment and you're not going to see a ton of composers do something like that um that might have their egos as yeah part they of, even use a lot of John Williams in that last film too so uh Desplat, yeah. who composed the last two films yep. he kind of was like shoved to the side a little but I think they're <laughs> Uh, the, when they were putting the protection spells over Hogwarts towards yeah. the end, ah, statues, was, so was good. Awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. That mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I you do want to see more of? I know this is going to sound weird, but more of the magic. Like uh, the special effects have come so far. Like I like to see the professors actually use more magic. Mm -hmm. I like in. I don't think we ever see Harry Potter in Sorcerer's Stone use a spell. No, I don't think so. In the movie, I don't believe Harry Potter does magic. No. Um, and it's ironic because, yeah, look at uh, Blatz. I just blew her fucking mind. Dude, yeah. Uh, and it, it's just so funny because Hermione's like, well, I mean, he a great wizard, yes. Harry. Ah. <laughs> he he does accidental magic in the beginning. Right. With yeah. the but I mean, I mean, at Hogwarts with a wand. With the wand. Not with a broom. Harry doesn't do Magic. Is it Levi right. Leviosa? You it's see, not, you see uh, Seamus next to him Seamus. trying to do things. You see uh, Harry and Ron with their feathers. But I don't believe, you might correct me if I'm wrong, maybe Delia's seen some. I don't believe that you see Harry Potter perform a spell in Sorcerer's you Stone. Don't. You don't. I thought, wow. Fuck? I've yeah. never thought of that. <laughs> Holy Ryan shit. Ryan blew my mind. Wow. I'm going to yeah. look. The, the, the ending is near. <laughs> Yeah, so, but no, that's the I thing. Think, yeah. well, well at the wand shop, he doesn't actually do magic. It's the no. magic of that. Oh, they shop do a great the job and... in the films of making the magic more serious as time goes on. That's why in Order of the Phoenix, when you see Dumbledore take on Voldemort, that's like the first like legit. That's, that's one of the best battles. Need to when when the Death Eaters come down and get him, there's there's like a legit that that's like the first yeah. time you see that magic is dangerous. Like people can get killed. You can die it's very serious easily, and then. You know, and then they level it up with Voldemort and and Dumbledore. That the troll, awesome. the troll. You he guys does. are saying the troll, but what did he? No. That was Ron. Ron. And Leviosa. That was Ron. That was Ron. 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 Harry Ron. stuck Ron. it up his nose because yep. he's on the back of him. Holy shit! Yeah, so, so, I mean, I like if somebody could tell me that's fine. I just don't he's remember. He's just it. sinking into his chair lower and lower. <laughs> and that's why it just it's fucking Hermione's crazy. You're a great wizard, Harry. What the fuck are you talking about? No, and he's not, like, he's not a great screen. wizard. That's the thing about yeah. Harry is he's not a great wizard. He's not a at all. average wizard. Yep. Uh, he's just tough. But he's a good. Well, and he's also he's also blessed by his mother's love. I mean, that's yeah. really. And think about he, it. He is tough. He that, you know, what people don't give order, him in Order of the Phoenix when he's, you know, uh, with Dumbledore's army. He's like, I, most of this is luck. Yeah. I, I got yeah. helped by other people, mm -hmm. you know, and it's true. He's really good at defense against the dark arts, obviously. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, even better than Hermione. You're good at fighting, but he got an outstanding and he's got OWL because of Voldemort too. All, some of his powers, like but all, time. Yeah. all he uses is stupefy, right? And uh, Expelliarmus. Expelliarmus, and like anybody else who would, if well, if, if not for the twin more. cores, if not for I'll the say. twin cores, he'd be we dead. We see a lot more fucking spell work of different spells, whether it's Impedimenta, Reducto, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, during actual fights, he has. Then just expel your arm and stupefy. That's true. That's true. It, like that we see in the movies. Harry's so that would be got, great yeah. to get into more of he's that got, stuff. Yeah, I mean, Voldemort's power, but he's also got like, he's Green Lantern. 
like he's got a lot of will he's got there's a lot of will with harry potter so yeah. mm-hmm. and that yeah. part in the goblet of fire where he's like if i'm gonna die i'm gonna die trying to yeah. that's that's, that's and, great and, and that's please why i show always... ron ron being tough yeah ron, me tough. and blabs always have this argument about uh fantastic beasts but I didn't like the the character decisions for Newt because I felt like he was just supposed to look super fucking autistic. Yeah. See, and, he and blew it, my mind when he said that. That's oh, twice no. now you've blown my mind. I didn't know <laughs> Newt was autistic. But because like that's it, it, oh, so it, it to gives, be fair, so is Luna. Okay. I mean yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But it like it t- feels to me they made it intentional for Newt to just be really weird <laughs> to be like, look, Luna wasn't even the lead fucking character. weirdos can be heroes. And it's like yeah. that was the story of the first series yeah like anyone can be a hero mm-hmm. um like it, harry was one decision away from not being the chosen one it'd be neville yeah. and it just yeah. so happened to be that he got chosen so uh, yeah look at neville he he always fails and yet he kills the last hall crux well he fails yeah. up to the fifth or one second. and then after you know bell just escapes he's like let's go right rock and i think he also <laughs> gets a new wand I think something After one of the Neville does one. Neville broke his wand right. in the fifth um, one in uh, the Ministry of the Magic. Ministry. Yes. And he and that was his dad's old wand. Right. And um, then after that he does really well with it Ryan though. Like it seems like he, he was being held back by his father's wand. No, cuz he, like, so. he was kicking ass during like DA meetings. Through, like, character arc. Yeah, he went yeah. through like a uh, very Wesley from uh Angel like character arc going from bumbling uh, dude to like complete confident. badass at the end so mm-hmm. yep. that's why we like that story arc everybody loves that story arc yep uh, it's the best yep love neville i mean yeah. and the, it didn't hurt that the kid went from chubby and goofy to like not a bad looking dude at the end to be mm-hmm. like this powerful wizard that i mean you know who, you know who are super yeah. powerful wizards like friend george oh yeah yes yeah. my favorite characters of the entire they, franchise think about what have, they do uh, they don't have Book smarts. They got street smarts. They got street smarts. What they, they it's have not even that do they do book justice. smarts. They just don't like care. To kill him. Yeah. Um, Will we get the swamp? I you know, because so. like cool. the Umbridge thing wasn't one act. It was like over it a couple a days, lot. right? Yeah. Yeah. The, like the, the swamp entire was process, in the video game. The in entire the process game. of them uh developing all of their stuff for Wizleads with wi- yeah. testing Wizard it on the students. And... It shows you how really creative they are and yep. how powerful Dedicated. the magic they can do in the point where they made those uh didn't they make those hats that could turn you invisible yes and the yeah. ministry of magic yeah. bought a bunch of them because the charms mm-hmm. were so yep. good and yep. not a lot of people are great at disillusionment charms and stuff so yep. yeah they are I mean, very very powerful their their that. family is even though they're like this poor and like open and like good to muggle family um they are a powerful family of wizards i mean you think about, you They're know, an old wizard family. They are. Molly and her family are powerful. You know, the only one that gets his ass kid kicked because he like kind of wasn't ready for it was the dad. I mean, he got attacked by a freaking a snake, a yeah. massive snake, you know, yeah, like, yeah, that, I, mean, it, I mean, like a lot of people would kind of get. Well, he was sleeping. Yeah, yeah, he was sleeping. Yeah, he wasn't exactly awake for it. That's true. Can, can we also like, <laughs> that's true. There's, uh, there's something that doesn't make sense to me in the wizarding universe. And that is. Unless I, maybe I'm missing something. I'm sure there could be out there. But when I just think in my mind, I can't think of any families that have more than like three kids. And that's a lot. A lot of kids are like single, single parents or like single kids, yeah. except for the Weasleys. The Weasleys have fucking seven. Yeah, but there's for, always like two, huh? Yeah, but for all these wins. people, especially pure blood wizards that mm-hmm. really care about line and about keeping the blood pure and about... Um, it being able to have enough pure blood wizards to do that. Don't you think they'd have more fucking kids? Like yeah. point, Lucius and Narcissa would have more than just one kid to me for these like Maybe people who so think of themselves up. as she have issues? because of that. I don't know. And then the, the people Narcissa that don't, the yeah, blood th- traders, the Weasleys have a million. Yeah. They're actually the, the biggest blood purists. They're trying well, to send think, it out I there. I think it's the, the, well, I, th- I think it's part of the elitism too. Uh, what, what if one of them had a squib? I'd be so devastating oh, yeah. to the family. Uh, and, and elites sometimes, especially these days, they don't have kids at all. So I don't know. And and I uh, think the Weasleys were supposed yeah. to be the white trash. Yeah, It's hard to find even a kids. family it's true. that has two kids. There's like the Regulus Patel Black twins. and Sirius. The Patel twins. I, I say three because I'm just thinking of Narcissa, oh, Bellatrix, and... Uh, 
Andromeda. Yeah, but, like three I think there, Tonks yeah. is a single child. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Lupin, I don't think has any family. James Dean, is a single Thomas. child. Now James, of course, ha- was had very late in life and kind of seemed like as a miracle baby. So that makes sense. Right. Lily and Petunia, they weren't wizarding families. Like they, they just to me, there doesn't maybe seem like a lot a of shit. siblings and a lot of big families in. The yeah, Wizard maybe world. after Draco, they're just like. Yeah, he was uh, such a big dick to like fuck it. No more. <laughs> No more kids. I swore I thought I, something about her giving birth was a rough one, but maybe that's a Pottermore one. Oh, kids are really good for mirroring your worst traits right back at you. Dude. <laughs> it, they make me question myself. Mm-hmm. Sorry. My three kids have made your me change a lot. They, no, no. That's what they do. <laughs> no, I just flow with that guy. I, um, it's more of my um, character flaws. We can get into it if you like, but no. back to That's Harry. That's what children are supposed to do. They're supposed they to really do. reflect yeah. back onto you and you Very go, oh, yeah, let, me, it, let me teach you not good to Good way of putting it. Humbling. Uh, uh, all right. Let me uh, let me get through some more of these here. And again, if anybody needs to go, just let me know. This I'm has been a great freaking stream. Me out. So. Um, Silver Screen Psychopathy for 20. I read all the books as an adult just because they were so prevalent in pop culture. Surprisingly, I love the series. Was disappointed by how much was taken out in the scripts, but I understand why. This is the moment. Could be incredible, could be a disaster, but this is the moment to put all that stuff back in. CJ for 10, the movies, particularly from Goblet of Fire onwards, didn't do the books justice. We didn't get enough Dobby, Ginny, Neville, etc. WB did a good job with House of the Dragon. I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, well, the, the similarities with House of the Dragon is the author's still around. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, one author finished their book series, one didn't. We won't bring that <laughs> up. But at least, like, George... George left Game of Thrones around season four. Yeah. It was after the, the, he had a falling out with D&D, but he was there in the writer's room for House of the Dragon. Uh, he was there to help Ryan Kandel and uh, Miguel Sapochnik, the woke idiot who's now gone. Uh, and it did make a difference. It made a huge difference. Uh, so they they, uh, they could have race swapped so many other characters in House of the Dragon, and they didn't. And the one they did like we said on, on Friday Night Tides, it made sense. They absolutely, they made it make they made more it work. sense than it did in the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, it actually, like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it was it, a good explanation as to why so many people felt the way they did about Renera. It's the um, emperor has no clothes. That's that's basically like this. There's a truth out there, but that nobody's going to question power right. at that point. Now, I know that JK is going to be heavily involved is there more information on what her role is going to be is she she's executive producer is she on going it? to be but she has like but executive producer can also I, mean i, just I know it could mean a lot but they they made it very clear that she is going to have control Creative. over god empress at this. just like she has with the parks and everything else she likes yeah. about uh, i mean she kind of I, I always get confused about like what legalities she has she owns it with warner brothers right it's like joint or what because oh. if you look at a website it's not that clear well I, she Oh, go ahead. You're not able to do anything without her say so, basically. Right. And that's what I was going to say. She owns the characters outright. Warner Brothers owns distribution. Uh, and they that gives the that gives them access to other rights that other companies don't have. But uh, she, that's why, you know, Pottermore came up and uh, she she started publishing her own shit, you know, yeah. and, and now she makes even more money. Yeah, this this is a, a very powerful franchise. It's not like, uh, you know, uh, Jeremy brought it up like Mario and Pokemon are bigger uh, as far as, you know, merchandising and games. But as far as like stories, this might mm-hmm. be the most powerful run right now when we're talking about like yeah. scripted entertainment. Uh, Star Wars is dead. Marvel is dying. Uh, Star Trek is get aged out and old. Uh, I can't think of one. That's more like that's why I said this announcement was fucking huge. Yeah. I was like, damn. Yeah. I, you know, well, like, they, some, this is a crucial po- point right now when you have the kids that grew up reading it when it came out to land a, a show like this big to get it back into the flow because yeah of course you're gonna have the fans like myself already passing it to their kids but if you do something like this and it works and it's really good you're gonna get a whole new group of people mm-hmm. you're gonna get more people going oh yeah i remember really loving that book series let me go back to it let me give it to my kid and then you get a whole nother isn't generation. that what you guys have been preaching for like the last how many years you've been on YouTube? Like you're ruining like the generational effect. Yeah. Think about like I've been trying to get my daughter can make it to through the first two movies. The Prisoner Azkaban starts to scare her even more. But 
once they're a little bit older, like I want to share this with them because the thing with, uh, Rowling's is she, she, I don't know if it was luck timing, whatever, but like the books were selling so good. She didn't have to take whatever deal they gave her for the first movie. You know, like she literally was lucky enough to hit it at the right time. And, and this is one of those, again, she's hitting at the right time where she has so much power over this IP that when people were like, you know, don't, you know, buy it. If she's involved, everyone was like F you because she's always going to be involved. And we love Harry Potter, you know, mm -hmm. like and, it's uh, hers. How much uh, did the uh, Hogwarts made? How much more than they expected it to make? It was some ridiculous, like number. three times more. Or something I think, I think the, the number was shit ton numbers more. Yeah. I believe it's shit ton. Yeah. yeah. Shit ton. Okay. Yep. So I All think, right, I, I think Harry Potter could have the, the same staying power as like Lord of the Rings. That's mm -hmm. why the Lord of the Rings fandom was so strong is because it is much older than these generational. Other yeah. Generational power that it has that staying power where people are like, no, you're not yeah. going to fuck with my shit. All right. And if, we've had this through my, my grandfather bought the book. He read the book. He gave it to my Star dad. Wars my is dad. older than Harry Potter though. Yeah. Well, but, but they ruined what it. What I'm saying is it wasn't <laughs> as old as that. Yeah. They were able to kind of get well, into having that. Having JK also... Rowling there is it, like, she gives a shit about her legacy. That's, right. that's the important yeah, that part. Is... Like she gives a shit. That's uh, she cares about, you know, even, even with, you know, fantastic beasts, right? It was a prequel, whatever. Yeah. I agree with Ryan a hundred percent. They should have written books first and then yes. based it on the I'm book. With that. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I, JK I Rowling should stay away from screenplay stuff. Um, yeah. Cause I, I, I even, I, when I watch those for... things, I feel like, I, I feel sometimes like it suffers from that. Mm -hmm. somebody like from yeah trying to write a book on she's screen. an author yeah. yeah as opposed to adapting it for a screenplay yep uh andrew mccarty for two best and worst of harry potter i think we talked about that a little bit some of our favorite and least favorite uh books and movie adaptations earlier my kill for five hope the new version will have peeves in the series we all mm. need peeves we all need peeves. this is mm -hmm. true Mm -hmm. Jason Platten for five. If WB series about making money, they'll honor the source. Their characters are iconic, and race and gender swapping will make it DOA. Fans will reject. You know who was supposed to play Peeves, by the way? Rick Mayo. Is Rick that how you pronounce his last name? Rick yeah. Mayo from the Young Ones. They passed. filmed it too. This yeah. footage. Oh no shit! So they were actually planning to have him. I, yeah, a, if you look online, there's one image floating oh, around wow, of him. That would as fit Peeves. so well. May you rest in peace. Yeah. Um, Matthew I have Hammond. A What's Sorry, your question? Brian. Well, it's mostly for Gary because he's also a fellow collector. How do you feel about seeing all these new faces on like merch? Because that's going to be wild after 23 years of seeing the same faces. Now we're getting a whole rebranding. Mm. And what do you think about this new merch? Like this, the current merch of like Dan, Rupert, Emma. You think the value is going to go up or down? Oh, it depends on how the series turns right. out. Because mm. because if, if the series is shit, the value will go up. They're, they're, you know, that older stuff will go up. Uh, but no, I think it'll, it, I think it'll kill. I think that, I think it gives them a new opportunity as long as, if the, as long as only the faces are different mm -hmm. and the robes aren't that yeah. different, they'll probably do like little differences, but they essentially look like the Hogwarts uh, dress robes. I think they'll do fine. I, I mean, you remember that there was the book merchandise, they had did yeah, action figures for what, what the book. That was my old, like, first oh, connection with Harry one. Potter. Yeah. was the book. I got some of it right now. So I think Harry <gasps> Potter is Harry is Simeon. much larger than Daniel Radcliffe and Rupert. Yeah, and Emma. Like it's a little out of my. It reading. transcends those those actors, which right. they did a good they job. Believe, what they believe they did. They believe though they're they are. Oh, of course they do. Yeah. You know, but the truth I wonder is, wonder what they're going to think with the royalties because now they're not going to have to be paid for like Harry, Ron, Hermione for future merch because the new yeah, faces will I, be. I, I, they don't I, have I'm sure that, Watson. They're going to be fine right <laughs> I, i'm sure that jk rowling is pretty happy about that yeah, yeah. all these people that have fucking stabbed turned her in the on back her. that she's oh, about do you to think that played, like, hey ryan do you think that played into the decision at all i think that i do <laughs> I a, little like bit. a little bit so here's what i do know i think they would have wanted to do as badly as it's received i think they would have loved to do a cursed child honestly or at least a sequel series of some sort with the original actors mm -hmm. there's no way you could get emma watson or daniel radcliffe on board to do that at this point with jk rowling because so, they're idiots yeah i agree they're idiots um i also think um I, I i there's some like reports out there that they that jk rowling offered or wanted an ungodly amount of money for all of the rights so that they could do whatever they wanted without her 
Right. Um, and that, she yeah. put like an astronomical up there and Warner Brothers said, well, I guess we're doing this then. Yep. So I, <laughs> I do think they would have wanted to potentially do other things. Uh, I would yeah. love to see a Marauders series at some yeah. point. Yeah. Like Dude, how founders. dope would that be? That would be dope. The, the founders would be awesome. And yes. that's something that you're f so free of any restrictions to do. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. It's like nice. Also, to be the, the fucking right founders didn't have very many kids, did they? Gryffindor. Uh, Gryffindor wasn't fucking. How is that possible? But mm. I don't Salazar think Gryffindor Slytherin had any did. kids. Salazar uh, Slytherin uh, did. Rainer Ravenclaw had one kid who fucking died. And then Helga Hufflepuff's the only one that really had a, a line that uh, that went on other than Slytherin. Because Hufflepuffs accept everyone. She was mm -hmm. Are you a Hufflepuff, Scott? Um, you would think so, because I'm chubby. Thanks a lot. That's not what I meant. Just no, I got what you meant. I got what fine. you meant. Yeah, no, I've never taken... I think that's fine. I've never taken... No, I'm just kidding. I've never taken the test. So, I, you know what? I'll be quiet for a bit, and I'll take the test on Pottermore, take right? Test. Take the test. There you go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just like... I don't know. Why aren't these people having more fucking kids? Doesn't make any sense. Um... <laughs> Where am I? Matthew Hammond for five. I hope all Harry Potter fans, the writing starts after the writer's strike and hopes WB needs a guaranteed hit over pushing wokeness. I we got to pay attention to who they have on show running and doing these things for sure. Yep. Very important stuff. Jay's gaping butthole for $2. I'm holding Daniel Radcliffe until he wakes up. <laughs> Thank you, Jay's okay. gaping butthole. Uh, <laughs> Predator Magnus for two. I'd like JK Rowling... I'd let J.K. Rowling peg if the TV show's good. There you go. Thank you uh, for sacrificing. Yeah. <laughs> West Britannicus for five. We all need to stop looking to resurrect the past about our time and attention towards uplifting new properties by independent creators. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, but I, I I, really like the I Harry Potter series. So yeah. You can, you can have both. It. I think you can uh, have both. Silver Screen Psychopathy for 10. I assume the race swap. Harry will be Indian. Hermione will be light-skinned black. Don't think they'll go full crispy. No, nah, Harry be Middle Eastern. Um, yeah, Harry Middle nice Eastern Harry, huh? Iraqi Harry Potter. One of many for Canadian Eleven. What does the panel think of Sir Ian being cast as Dumbledore? We talked about that a little bit. Um, John Cunningham for ten. I read all the books as a kid, saw the movies except the first in theaters. I remember feeling the sense of wonder and magic the whole time, riding home in the car with my dad, talking about it. Yeah, I got into Harry Potter. Uh when the third book came out because in my, I think sixth grade, I think in my sixth grade English class, we listened to the audio book of Sorcerer's Stone and we read Jim along Dale, with it. Jim, uh, Jim Dale. <laughs> I, I'm I, fuck Steve you Fry. all. Cause I'm feeling you were in what grade again? Uh, I think movie? I was in sixth yeah. grade when all right. prisoner of Azkaban was coming out. What year is that? Um, Should I make two, Gary cry? 2000. I was younger than that. Like, uh, 2000 or 2001? 2000. Yeah. 2001 was when the first uh, yeah, two, book two, movie two, came out. 2000 was because... Uh, I was partying. <laughs> because Prisoner of Azkaban came out around 2000 or 2001 time frame, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, the book? Uh, 2000... The book. No, 1999 was when the third book came out. So that's probably right around when it was then, 99, 2000, right in that time frame because uh, the first two books were out. Because I immediately bought the first two books on paperback, and Prisoner of Azkaban was the first hardcover that I bought because mm. when it was out, and then I, the rest I had hardcovers. So that's the time I started getting into. It. In two thousand one, I saw the movie first, and I was five. Gary, yeah, five. Wait, wait. When? I was wow. five in two thousand one. I was born oh in nineteen ninety six. I was thirty one. I was in college in nineteen ninety six. I was nine. Out. It's 97. I, I was you nine, so I was Gary like right today. there with Harry. No, you, you you walked up to me at the meetup goes, my dad loves you. <laughs> no. Hey, man, I thought you were a, a great too. It's not just my dad. I thought awesome. your dad's awesome. Um, <laughs> he says hi. <laughs> tell him I said hi. Okay. Three beer yeah. thunder for 20. Anthony Hopkins is Dumbledore. He's getting a little old. I don't know if he'll last. Um, God, he's oh, a yeah. fucking legend, he's though. Such a great actor. Yes. Great actor. Uh, he's sober, knows what's up. Love that guy, man. Um, Freckle Jesus as Harry. Uh, Idris Elba as Snape. Margot Robbie as Mrs. Weasley. Patty Constantine as Lupin. Matt Damon Targaryen as Sirius. Will Smith as Lucius. Kevin Hart as Dobby. Caitlyn Jenner as Old and Trans. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's quite the cast there, Three Beer Thunder. Uh, John Cunningham for 20. 
continue from the last one, trying to process what I was feeling after watching it with his dad. Even with the 20th anniversary return to Hogwarts, I felt the magic. Not once did I feel that with Fantastic Beasts. This series nope. must continue the magic. I think a lot of that centers around It has Hogwarts. to be in Hogwarts. Yeah, it's yeah. being centered in Hogwarts. Osmora becomes a channel member. Thank you, Osmora. El Elijah Voller for 20. My dog America passed away early Sunday morning and her brother Logan passed away from a broken heart last night. That is rough. Elijah, I'm sorry to hear that. GNG livestream has been helping me. Thanks for those who pray. Will you please pray for my family? Yeah, that's really yeah. tough, man. So that is a tough right. um, to sorry to hear about that. Jonas Campbell for five. Thanks for hating the movies, RK. I don't hate the movies. No. I just have a lot of criticisms for what they could I have watch been. the ones I hate. I still watch like I, my, I hate I, when a couple I do of my them. whole thing. I, I watch them in order. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I legit hate, hate a couple moments I like. Uh, 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 Half Blood Prince is just it's a dour it's the worst movie for me yeah, it's all they have the weird like romantic looking, stuff that's yeah, it's, like, yeah, too it's much like, uh, your shoelace is untied dude cut, cutting out the did you hear their logic for cutting out the that battle at the end of the yeah book? the dumbest it's, shit oh well, what did they say oh yeah, they, you they, there's gonna be so many battles in the next book we didn't want no, to that's not even why but yeah, I'm watching why? this movie they didn't now want many battles no there was another reason why what's that they did so um That's what Yates said. Oh, for oh, you mean like the end battle? I thought you meant like the Weasley Burrow. They added a little burrow scene in there yeah, just because there was out. no action. They, yeah, and they said, Well, that was our action scene, and we cut out the this is what David Yates said. It's just so stupid. He cut it David out because Yates there's sucks. gonna be so many battle scenes in the next movie. It's like oh. God, that sucks because that is such a great like one Harry is like a fucking he he goes down like a bat out of hell with like the fucking righteous rage of what just happened to everything yeah. right um also the that scene where snape kills dumbledore and and harry's freed from the body bind curse and everything like his realization of why he's able to be walking now because the person who cast the charm is dead in dumbledore mm -hmm. is like God, that that like, kills you when you're yeah. something that. they changed in the movie as well but then he, there's also like a Tonks and Lupin confessing their love and a Fleur and Bill in the hospital. And none of that is in the movie. None of that. Yes. You and, know what? Scene? Uh, another one I want to see. When Hagrid, when they go after Hagrid. And oh, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beat the shit out of everybody. Oh, like that. That's I want to see yeah. Hagrid beating the shit out of everybody. That's yeah. where you see like giant Hagrid. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that one thing that is lost. Um, they do obviously a great job in the first and, and second to an extent uh movies the talk that dumbledore always has with harry um yep. at the end of every single book to wrap things up those are in the when you do rereads of the books or re-listens on audiobook they are fucking powerful yeah. when you mm -hmm. think of all the things that are to come and holy shit they're they're just so good and you really need to do those more time with dumbledore in those early books uh especially afterwards i also would like to say Big shout out to Voldemort. He really cares about people's education. Uh, he really waits to do anything or enact any of his plans till like April or May, like right around end of term. He wants these guys to get all their learning in before he really finalizes his dastardly deeds. To be fair, um, he even mentions in the book he has a great respect for Hogwarts. Yeah. I mean, he not so much, but, but the full, yeah, but like he believes in the education uh, and he doesn't want to hurt anybody except you're, if you're filthy mudblood. But uh, yeah. other than that, like, he wants you educated for sure. He wants to educate before he kills you. Yep. Well, I mean, they are filthy. <laughs> well, he wants to educate the youth to become Death Eaters like him. Death yep. Eaters. Okay. Uh, so, I really like that. I mean, they made him look way more KKK early on. They totally <laughs> did. Like, Dude, just, yeah. yeah. And they kind of took that away as time went on. But their masks <laughs> were cool. I like yeah. that. Um, he pulls so them just, off their face. <laughs> I'm Ravenclaw. I would never have guessed that. Ravenclaw. I would have. Yeah, no, no, come on, smart. Wit, wit beyond measures, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, um, I think Scott's a Hufflepuff. It's fine. Yeah, I'll, they, you know what? You take Go with rest, it. So. Go with it. I'm Ravenclaw with the heart of a Hufflepuffer. Hey, Huffer? Cedric was Hufflepuff as well. Uh, Bill, <laughs> for that super chat. So, like, can I read this one, Ryan? Yeah. It's, uh, it's for ten dollars. It's great. It says. Uh, they cut out the battle in Half Blood Prince. Can you imagine Peter Jackson saying, "Yeah, we cut out Helm's Deep because there's going to be a lot of battles in the next movie." <laughs> yeah, oh my God. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. dumb. And, and that too, like him, like 
going skidding around a corner with blood on his shoes like that that really stands out to me from that chase when he's trying to chase down That's snape and taking the shortcuts and everything holy shit um as is trans tits <laughs> for two what? bucks great name what says, a great name oops well what did he say earlier uh oh he said quarter black as bill weasley with his 18 kids um and <laughs> then have a lot of kids? and then for two he says oops i met arthur also arthur. bella Ramsey is grip hook what yeah that, what did I, I see lizzo as grop <laughs> <laughs> that would be good that would be good um oh, all right Hager. We get through a couple of these here. Wow, you guys are awesome. Uh, to finish up Jonas's, <laughs> to finish up Jonas's uh, chat, he said that Order of the Phoenix is the only one that's a solid adaptation past part one. Um, I don't mind Order of the Phoenix because I I wasn't as big of a fan as that book as some of the other ones, so I wasn't missing as much. I love that book, and I like. Yeah, the I love the book. Yeah, the movie's, the, the movie's good. fine. Um, they miss out a lot of stuff. Yeah, sure. stuff that's wrong. Brightest day for two. Seems you guys picked Brightest up a grifter. I yeah, that's me. Yeah, Ravenclaw. A grifter or a drifter? I, I'm a little bit of both. Okay, maybe he's an asthmatic puffer. To be fair, I'm a um, asthmatic puffer. Gilderoy Lockhart is a Ravenclaw. Yeah, see, I'm kind of like him. I'm a little bit over myself. A little, you know, puffed can up. Can we? Can we say Haggard was really like setting the stage for Harry to despise Slytherins when he said. There wasn't a witch or wizard that went wrong that wasn't in Slytherin. Was that we planned? That. I, I know I watched the same Dumbledore's great plan as you. Oh, video, what a great video uh, series. But no, no, what I'm saying, I'm saying is he always did Dumbledore plan that? I don't know, but he sent Hagrid knowing his feelings if Harry ever asks I know. about but Slytherin. Here's the problem is that uh, two books later, you find out that Hagrid literally got Sirius is bike and like he knows Sirius Black right. and he thinks Sirius Black went bad and he was in Gryffindor. Right. So, um, cheers. Brightest day. I said that one. As is wonky eyebrow for two. Quarter Sirius Black. Make it happen. Ooh. Megan Markle as Umbridge. <laughs> My favorite character. So. Uh, Bill Sotheby for five. If people get past their hate of Star Wars sequel trilogy, Adam Driver might be perfect for Snape. I don't think people hate Adam Driver. I think he's no. good. No, no. Yeah, he's not good the most popular one to come out of that right. trilogy. He got a bad rap. He he stepped away in an appropriate way, made fun of himself, you know, and now he's, you know, Ray is pregnant. Classy about it. <laughs> yeah, classy's the word. Xavier Savior Heart for Ozzy 10. Do you guys think uh, that any of the original cast members from the films will cameo? Also, writing up the rules for Lego Tabletop War Game. Very cool. Wow. I think there's a chance you'll see a little thing here or there. I think Tom yeah. Felton would love... He's begged. Okay. He said, I would love... Even if I'm a background character, I love this world and I'd love to be part of anything else they do. I think he'll do something. Going back though to the Emma Watson thing, you, I I really feel like in that world she has like you know power because she's a more famous than some of them. You know I can see some of the base her, people her coming. Her career hasn't like she, she Emma Watson's no powerhouse in Hollywood. She's no power. No. She's never been a no, good like, actress. That's why ever. I said in that group though. In that group, you yeah, know, yeah. like well, she even posted the other day saying, "Oh, I filmed Harry Potter reunion in like the last two years that she kind of took a break off of Instagram. So like, it doesn't seem like she hates the world. No, she hates, she hates, sure she hates the JK, author. But here's JK. the thing. All right. Yeah, of the pe of all these hates. people, um, as we saw during the Harry Potter reunion special, since you so appropriately brought it up, mm -hmm. we saw that Tom Felton and Emma are actually incredibly close. Yes. Yeah. They're best and friends. obviously Tom Felton hasn't felt the need to back off any of his stuff. Any That's of true. his praise. So, I, you know, maybe she doesn't have that much power. And yeah. I think we've seen more people. We've seen more people like Ivana Lynch come out recently and support JK. And that mm -hmm. was brave of her to say, I made a mistake. Like, that's mature. Like, yeah. I screwed up. I didn't really know what I was talking about. And this is the truth. Yeah. Like, if if uh, we still see, like, pundits on that daytime uh, fucking YouTube channel, we're, we're just spouting that bullshit again uh, that, like, she was saying uh, jk was saying something transphobic which she just flat out wasn't it, it's just not she's saying very she said some very simple things uh and you know we won't get into it here but no. it wasn't anything that can be interpreted that way it's just bullshit that's it's just lies that are just mm -hmm. being repeated over and over again uh which happens on the internet uh, and a quick little search just see what what the transgression tweets are when you read them you're like that's it 
Yeah. Yeah. But they know people won't do that, Gary. It's all about headline. No, what was, it's all what about was the narrative. phrase? It's a very online conversation. I love that response. I love that's that. A very that's good. a good one. Casey. Also, knowing that it's going to trigger all the people with pronouns in their bios because they're online. Yep. That was the polite, say, the polite way to say, uh, we don't give a fuck. We're going to make a lot care. of money. Mm -hmm. no. We're not talking about it. Uh, Jonas Campbell Fry, Deathly Hallows Part 1, did a great job communicating how bored Harry, Ron, and Hermione were in the books while camping. I felt that boredom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Silver Screen Psychopathy for five. Absolutely loving the stream. Great, pa great panel. Keep up the Thank good you. work. Thank, Thank you. you. Ellen Propaganda for a thousand Hungarian. Alan Rickman was too charismatic to play a proper Snape. Snape was supposed to be a greasy loser, but he had way too much a Chad to portray him as such. Valid point. Yeah. Yeah, he was supposed um, to bully Neville just for shits and giggles. But you're supposed to like how much you hate Snape, and that right. takes the charm. There has mm -hmm. to be a charm in there, and Alan Rickman was fucking awesome. So yeah, you're gonna need somebody who's got a little gravitas and who you'll you you hate this guy, but God, you you just like him when he's on screen. So yeah, um, Jason, it, it's they it, they had so many great, incredible actors and actresses in that original one. So it's gonna yeah. be a tall tale to replace a lot of these guys. Jason K for 10. Hi, Gary. You call Chrissy's fiance a filing cabinet. Is that because he has an office job or is that boomer slang for something else? Has anyone seen Nefarious? If so how was it? I have not seen Nefarious yet. I'm looking forward to seeing it. See it. But I think he's talking about filing cabinet in reference to a Frosk meme from a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was not my naming. That was uh, Chrissy. That's Chrissy. what he calls her own fiance is filing cabinet. And that's basically because he's her filing cabinet. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I think that somebody just gave me a really good casting. What do you guys think of Pedro Pascal as Dumbledore? No. Why? Oh my He's in all the biggest right? series. He's babysitting another kid, huh? I said Ewan McGregor, if you want to go that route. Ewan McGregor as Dumbledore. Oh, you know. You know. I think, off. Off. I think I, he could pull it off. I think he could pull that off. Old. I guess you could make him look older. I, I don't hate it, ironically. He's not old enough. I, I do agree with that. He's not nearly old enough. Needs to be Pedro Pascal's in every big fucking streaming show right now. So yeah, he annoys stop me. Right. Yeah, for now, stop he's it. about to get written out of two of them. <laughs> yeah, right. But <laughs> he's about <laughs> to die off in both. Time's a ticket. ticking. You, you and McGregor though, right now, but it's it could run for seven, eight, ten years. He's yeah. he could play when older. They start filming. They could be filming in like a year and a half. Old, years, I don't think they should get a guy on the, on his deathbed. To right. Yeah. Kind of screwed Harry's. up that one. Yeah. All respect to Richard Harris, but yeah. Well, that's why the the Capaldi one is good because he's yeah. in his mid sixties. He'll be around, and you know, obviously, you never know. But yeah, I think you know, he's great. He's in good shape. He's a great actor. He has mm -hmm. tons of gravitas. And I think he'd be perfect. Fuckity bye. Love it. Could, can I just say your chat is on fire with like some of the people they're coming up with? Uh, Jonathan Majors is Dumbledore. Oh. Yeah, I mean he's got it. He's probably gonna have a job or uh, uh, probably gonna have some openings soon. Oh so, man! And I don't think he would have a problem with being rough with Harry. Andy Circus. Uh, <laughs> Andy Circus could play somebody in it for sure. He could play anyone, Dobby. just any character. Man, he, could Moody. he could play Dobby. He gets a Moody. He could be Moody. He could be Moody. He could definitely they said be Moody. Moody. Yeah. They said as Dumbledore, and somebody else said Joe Biden as Blumbodore. Calista <laughs> uh, Hobbs for five. Would you guys want anyone for the... Oh, I said that one. Yeah, Elizabeth uh, Hurley as Rita Skeeter. That's good. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth Hurley. Yeah. How Some of y'all... Oh, now? my God, she's, she's young. young. Yeah. She's yeah. so young. Yes, and she's Austin, attractive. First Austin Powers. Oh, hang on, hang on. I think I know who you're talking about. And uh, yeah, you're you're young. And uh, fifty year old women alive. She was in a, a, okay. Bedazzled. Did you ever watch Bedazzled? Fifty seven year old women alive. Yeah, I know she is. She, is, yeah. she does look good. She though. still looks good. What about Great. somebody said Christian Bale as Sirius Black? Too old. Too old. Yeah. Too old. And you uh, gotta go younger. Be in that. Joe sure. Bob Purdue for three fifty. Voldemort plus Mortal Kombat equals interesting. Elliot Page is Harry. Uh, sure. Carl Thorsten for 50 Swedish crones. Dudley and Harry actually visit one another's homes later in life repeatedly. They end up being on very good terms. Yeah, I think they send like Christmas cards and all that. Yeah, they did Dudley so wrong, man. Because that's such a huge part of the story is his his like transformation at the very end. Like I just I don't know why, and I don't know why they left that out. Mark Strong. They got a lot. Mark to cover, Strong. Man. Who could Mark Strong play? I mean, he could be a Voldemort. Voldemort. I can see Mark Strong as, as Voldemort. 
could be. Um, no. Who plays Kingsley? Idris Elba. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say it. <laughs> pretty much. Idris uh, Elba's got to play Kingsley. I who played Kingsley in the movies was perfect. Yeah, he, he was. was. Yeah. Uh, the assassin from He's got uh, style. Firefly. Uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, she, she Not she Firefly. Like... Um, Serenity. Serenity. She yeah. Edge, edgy for operative. Yeah. yeah. 12, years, Twelve years a slave. Or yeah. I would have said work, Lance Reddick, but no, no, work with no. me on this one. Oh, he would have been good. He would have been, would have been, so, been good. so good. Work with me on the Eddie Izzard. Eddie Izzard as yeah. what? Kingsley as Shacklebolt. As, <laughs> we gotta have a race swap somewhere, right? And as Mrs. McGonagall, maybe. <laughs> McGonagall. <laughs> he uh, kind of looks like McGonagall. He oh, does she. now. Or she, whatever. Uh, Sorry. One twelve famine for five. Neville Longbottom and Harry share the same birthday. It could have been Neville destined to kill. Eddie Izzard is Umbridge. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be better. yeah, that'd be real good. <laughs> uh, it's all pink, decked out. <laughs> e B for one nine nine. Thank you. Kicksta for Ozzy seven ninety nine. Anyone remember the scene in the book five where Harry and George beat up Malfoy after Quidditch? Dynasty that put on screen. We talked about that. Everybody needs to see more Quidditch. Yes. The oh, idea yeah. of winning the Quidditch World or the Quidditch Cup uh, in what is Third it books? One. Three, five, five and six, six are yeah. so important. Yes. Oh, the kiss um, between Harry and Ginny, like the actual one where like there. It's in the common room surrounded by everyone. Yeah. That, that. And they also need to have kids that have, I know it's hard to pick them at 11, but like at some point, even if you have to swap out Jenny to get somebody who has chemistry with Harry and it's not like weird and uncomfortable. I, I, I don't know how much I can blame on do. Bonnie Wright and no, Daniel Radcliffe oh. versus nope. just the direction and the things they were making them do. Right. I, I yeah. blame so much more of that on the filmmakers than yeah. on them personally. Here's a cookie. She's no fine game. in the fourth one, like I said. Like she's kind of like a bit like yeah, sassy. She's, mm -hmm. she's spicy and all that. Weasley sassy. is our king. We need Weasley, Weasley is our king. Is our we king. need the song. Yes. 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 And again, Spew. in book Spew. five, Spew. like the fact that Ron was on the team is important. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's they never mentioned. Yeah. Huge. They, yeah, they cut Quidditch completely out of five. But yeah. then in six, it's almost like he's trying out for the team instead of trying to keep his spot on the team, which I do right. think is a big difference. So, mm -hmm. And I also think, I'm sorry, but World Cup, like you have to show at the least game. some of the game. Yeah, yeah. like the entire to, first episode should just be that. But, yeah. You know, like, because you want to see how great of a seeker. Um, oh, my God, I blanked. Victor Crumb. Victor Crumb is, yeah. Like, he's amazing. You know, like, I don't know. Also, the Vila, the, the Vila. I was just Vila about to say out. that. Oh, yeah. 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 And where they all like almost jump off the stadium and everything because yeah. they love the them. Yeah. The and the fake gold. But, and introducing Winky. Uh, and obviously mm -hmm. with Barty Crouch next to her. Like that. Would, you, yeah. would you keep the two schools boy girl? Because they're co ed in no, the book. There's no they, reason to do I, Like, it's not bad. Like, it's whatever. But right. I feel like you might as well make it true. I think people are smart enough to understand, you know, that they're two different schools. Yeah. Uh, East Coast Toasty Boy for five. Rings of Power made their elves black, but they won't make their house elves black. Maybe that'll just be the push the oppression grift. Yeah, we'll see. BFSD for five. Y'all know Aunt Marge, who Harry blew up in Harry Potter 3. The actress who played her is Trunchbull in Matilda, mm -hmm. the big nasty woman. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, Mr. Buttcrack Media becomes a channel member. Thank you. Joe for 10 bucks. Honestly, Harry Potter, my favorite books, but I wish he'd try to improve more. It drove me nuts. They got rid of the DA in book six. Yeah, Harry just turns all his focus into following Malfoy around and mm -hmm. sometimes and, trying to get Horace Slughorn's memory. Yeah. And his potion book. Yes, that's true. And kissing Ginny. That's about it. Yeah, Harry. Xavier Savior Hard for two. Olivia <laughs> Coleman is McGonagall. Oh. Olivia Coleman. That is She'd be good. She'd be really good. Tell yeah. me something she's in because I know the name. She might Olivia. be a better. She's oh, yeah, Elizabeth. She might Crown. be a better Umbridge. She's in Hot Fuzz. She's one of the police officers. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's right. like the really smiley one. She's in the eleventh hour, Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Brad Mann for ten. You think uh, that J.K. is using the books to take away cast members like Radcliffe's ability to say they're those characters as punishment for betraying her? Like Radcliffe will no longer be Harry Potter. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit there. It's be been honest. going on for so long. She has the right to be like, okay, you guys are assholes. You know, because like, again, Harry Potter is bigger than these actors. Yes. It is much bigger than that. It will be nice to see he's not Harry. Okay. Like there's multiple Harrys. It's a character, not Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe made him like a dick starting yeah. the fourth one and yeah. on. He was not sassy or anything. He was just a dick and yeah. self centered the entire time. 
the, Harry Potter is he was very fine, different in the books. You could definitely the improve on Daniel Radcliffe's performance. Yeah, he was drunk in the sixth one the entire time. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything special about Daniel Radcliffe's Harry Potter performance, nah. right? Like the this what's special is the story, not his no. performance. Well, you got to say for an uh, eleven year old, he did end up being a decent actor, like yeah. they all did. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, hundred percent. Like, yeah. um, a lot I, of I pressure think that, too. I think Emma Watson is probably the best actor of like the big three, right? Better yeah, than Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, I like Rupert. Rupert. I think the Rupert. Best. I think Rupert's the best. Yeah, I I, I like Rupert personally but in ter- i just haven't seen a ton from him outside right. of what we've seen i know? hate everything that emma watson has ever done uh, mm-hmm. being like a beast, ever i don't really like her she's or horrendous her movies, and beauty but, yeah. and the beast uh, horrendous. Awful. i watched it on a plane it was like the longest flight of my life because so of it bad. it's leviosa not leviosa i hate I liked her in like her um, back then. that movie like with ezra she's perfect as that uh, though. wallflowers like, she, yeah. emma does a great job as young hermione and then she they got, turn they turn Hermione into like just the Mary hot cool Sue. girl. Isn't she know? the savior? Yeah. Like in a way, like I feel like she's the one. Like they take all of Ron's most awesome moments and either give it to her or somebody else. Like she they, they like, make her, her way bad more traits they, away. Yeah, they, they do way too much to make her super awesome. They and, take away some of Harry's stuff too, Ryan. Yeah. Like and mm-hmm. give it to her. Like yeah. why? And now and obviously. Harry wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things he does right. in the books without Hermione. She's right. really fucking important. She's the brain. But she has weaknesses and like especially under pressure, not being able to maybe perform spells as well. She's not um, good on broom. Like she doesn't yeah, she's yeah. Right. she can't fly. She has strengths and weaknesses like all three of them, but in the movies she don't she only has strengths. Yeah, you and never see only really has weaknesses. weaknesses. Right. And she snaps a lot, like you said. She's not very good under pressure. Yeah, she's she's, she's insufferable snappy. at times with oh my the spew God. and stuff like that. And... Or the in the movie, like when they're doing the uh it's not gonna work. And she's well, like, that's ah, not really in I, the book. I, I know, I hate her. I'm sorry, I just hate how she I hate okay. everything. Um, wow. You, sorry. You, you hate sorry. women, Scott. Yeah, you're perfect but, for this. She well, no. Unfortunately, you're never coming on. But she's she's hot. Yeah, she's hot. Okay. East Coast Toasty Boy for two. Uh, Lizzo for Fat Lady, but what she fit the frame. Uh, get a get a big frame, I guess. Egg Swing, my man. Egg Swing's here with five <laughs> gifted memberships. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, West Britannicus. It's, it'll open. it's like a garage door. <laughs> yeah. it'll, it'll, I think they'll find a frame big enough for her. Uh, <laughs> Zoom all the way up. Yeah. Oh. West Britannicus for five. J.K. Rowling said when she conceptualized Haggard, she was thinking of Robbie Coltrane. That's true. In a way, the man played himself. Yeah. Um, nerd issues for five. The extended edition come with the ultimate editions of the movie, at least with the first few. I prefer to watch them over the original. First couple. First, first couple, they did that, yeah. Um, thank you, nerd issues. X-Wing for five. Awful panel and horrible black pill in Sanos. Thank you, X-Wing. <laughs> Appreciate it. That sounds uh, like one of my super chats on my <laughs> channel. <laughs> East Coast Toasty Boy for two. Jack Black for Mad Eye Moody. He has the vibes. He's too fat. Um, too old. Strike no, too for not ten. The character. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I don't. I don't want to see Jack Black play himself. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, Shrike for ten bucks. Henry Cavill is Professor Flitwick. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good His one. Arms are the right size, but uh, <laughs> That's true. That's true. He got little arms. It's like a T Rex. Yeah. Oh. Um, how much, uh, Bashy? How did I miss this fifty dollars super chat from Bashy? Bashy, 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 fifty bucks. Bashy. Thank you, Bashy. Zendaya as Hermione, Tom as Harry, the fat kid as Ron, Ezra <laughs> as Dumble, and Simu Lu as Voldemort. Oh God! You did go. you finally install the stuff, Ryan? Uh, I haven't. <laughs> Bashy, I haven't installed it yet. I'm an asshole. Look at my fucking Back background. For dude. Something? <laughs> look at my, look at my um, insert install talking about the the stuff like ads has in his background the the light panels i still yeah. haven't installed them um, oh you got a trans light panel too oh you can i do have a trans light panel okay uh, that's good. bashy so uh so cool. <laughs> that's great exactly and then he also says also watch tetris i want to i will try uh, thank you bashy watch for 50 bucks mike hill for five extra girl is cho chang That'd be perfect. <laughs> Yay! Uh, X Wing bec- at the Raging Ryan two level says, "Give us Ryan as Malfoy." I'm a little old. I'll play Lucius though. That's a good casting. I'd play Lucius in a fucking heartbeat. Uh, 
Xavier Savior Hard for two. Russell Crowe as headless as nearly headless Nick. What about him as Dumbledore? Mm. Yeah. You got to hit the gym a little bit. I mean, yeah. really hit I love Russell Crowe, but like, yeah, you got a little treadmill action. <laughs> little tre- Dumbledore skinny. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I know Michael Gamba wasn't uh skinny, but Dumbledore skinny. He's tall. That's a big commitment. Seven years. I there's what about Gerard tons- Butler. Is it Dumbledore? No, no, no. Oh. Mad Eye, Gerard Butler. Yeah, hey, Mad Eye will be That's all right. Cool. Dun- Dumbledore has these like really long, slender hands yeah. that they yeah. mention like Gerard over. That's something Gambon ha- did have. He did have the the Dumbledore hands, which is Gambon. Which is yeah, good. he did. He had those like long. Well, hands. He had a French manicure on him too, just like Ian McKellen has. Yeah. And I, the only reason I know that is because my wife's like, "That's a French manicure." Oh, I thought because he got them too. I'm also it's gay. The tips. Said, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's cool, man. It's Mel cool. Gibson is Dumbledore. There you go. Um, <laughs> Carl Thorsten says Tonks was a metamorph magus, basically an animagus on steroids. She could turn herself into any person she wants. Can even appear as a ghost if she wished. Yeah. Um, uh, she, I don't think she could I don't know if she could do the ghost. It's just facial, right? She could definitely be black. So. And Teddy got that too, right? Yep. I believe yep. so, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He can do like X-wing. blue hair and all that. Yep. X-Wing for five. Gary's figures aren't on cardboard, and I'm triggered as fuck. Oh, because uh, yeah, if they, they were, I wouldn't be able to fit them even in my new house. Yeah. Okay, so that, that was a space issue. The good ones, the really good ones are still on card, but honestly, I don't, like, a lot of these are from my store. Most of these are from my store that just left over. Did you keep yeah, you the You can't see the carded else? ones. I keep the boxes for my hot toys. All the carded ones are above the camera. You can't yeah, see they're them. above the camera. I just got in. Sorry, I'm going to brag. Take your time, Ryan. But uh, yes. I just got in like the holy grail. I've been because I sold one at the store and I regretted it. I found uh, an original Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Indiana oh, Jones. Those are freaking dude. impossible. Actually, the Kenner one, the first movie, yeah. are easier to find than the Temple of Doom knockoff. Like they're kind of shitty. Really? Didn't make a lot of them. Yeah. So like it goes goes for eight. Hundred bucks, thousand bucks. I finally found one. Wow. I don't pay that guy. I wait till I. You got a guy. I well, I feel like uh, I wait for a mistake on or a, an auction that's not going too hot, and and uh, and don't pay that much because he swoops in. I swoop in in the middle of the night and just go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got him. Like, you have like an alarm set like one in the morning. <laughs> yeah. like, Ding, time to go. India is mine. <laughs> yeah, that is a hard figure to find, but I got it. Oh, <gasps> Gary Oldman as Dumbledore. Sorry. Gary Oldman would be a good Dumbledore. Perfect. Yeah, would they bring actually, him back though? Yeah, why not? Maybe. Again, it's a very he's a different character. character. He's I, this series he was doing was it for him, according to Gary Oldman. God, he's so good. Yeah. Gary D. Oldman. Brown for five bucks. I hope they expand Act Three Order of the Phoenix. There was so much better magical combat left out of the movie. Hundred percent. Yeah. The entire McGonagall ministry thing is so attacked. rushed. Oh yeah. Yeah, McGonagall taking four stunners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where, where would Brie Larson Department go? of Mysteries, seeing all the stuff in there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Brie Larson. Um, oh, the, the brain. The brain. Oh, brain yeah. The guy and the the... And stuff. Yeah, that would have been fucking cool. Turning I don't know what baby where head. Brie Larson fits um, in this thing. Draw. She could be Narcissa Malfoy. <laughs> um, we Lee... say Bellatrix. Winky with those feet. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> he does have all the goblin and the green guy. But, she's, but she's, she's, got a, <laughs> she's got a Bellatrix rack, so. Uh, <laughs> Lee McGovern for five. Barty Crouch Jr. kept Mad Eye alive because Polyjuice Potion only lasts for an hour, so we need a constant supply of hair to keep the illusion going. Yeah, we, we talked about that, uh, about the hair. But I agree with you, Ryan. You I, just cut it off. The life thing. I never thought of that until you said that because it does. Yeah. It takes away his leg and everything. Yeah, like it's Polyjuice Potion has very like specific rules. And um, now this is just a joke, but they do reference like Ron in both the movie and the. Uh, and the books talks about, oh, Harry, I knew Ginny was lying about that tattoo. Yeah. Um, which implies, that's obviously a joke, but it implies mm-hmm. that Polyjuice Potion would, in fact, transfer tattoos mm-hmm. as yeah. well. Yes. So I do think, I don't think you'd be able to Polyjuice Potion a dead person. No. Um, hypothesis. Yeah. X Wing for 20 bucks. Question for the panel. What were all the wizarding schools during during this massive war between the light and dark? Do we have other famous dark wizards from, I don't know, Spain, Italy, France? Did they know of Voldemort? They explain that. 
Yeah. They're so all, yes, they do. They are aware, but like the schools and the 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 community, very separate. They yeah. they're, and they're magically hidden. At least the schools are. They're magically hidden. A lot of the towns are. Like, Durmstrang to, to is. Yeah, they yeah, don't know where Durmstrang is. is. They don't know where uh, Bobaton is. They suspect maybe it, Dumbledore knows, but it, um, it's in France, right? We know Bobaton's yeah. in France. We know yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, Durmstrang is somewhere in, like, in Eastern mountains, Europe. They but they yeah. don't Eastern know Europe. exactly, and it's to hide from Muggles mostly. But they mm -hmm. also yeah. they're not aware of their own proximity. That's where like that's where I think kind of Fantastic Beasts kind of fucked with that a little bit, and they're all just yeah. hanging out and all. It's yeah. like yeah, there's too it's many. It's just very them. clunky though. That trilogy it's again like going into chaotic. aspects of the world outside of the books you get into murky area of you you well, fuck it up a little bit too much i like the idea of learning about america or like the idea of wizards being UK, over there but then they did it the too problem. much yeah i don't want to see this is a uk this is a i don't fuck Keep, it's america. gotta stay sorry okay when it comes to like british stuff i i just don't care about america like i, I think the only reference in the book is at the tri wizarding uh no at the at the Quidditch at the World Cup they have World a Cup. the Salem they talk about the Salem. and I love that little aspect yeah. you go oh there's more out there but that, that, that's it you don't that's need to know more it. like it's like the biggest fuck up with the X Men was there's too many X Men there's just Wait, too so. many X Men and like that, that they, they what about like something in Japan something far away from Hogwarts Ooh. that they can't fun, touch yeah. the lore yeah that's what I'd be down for. Well, I mean, if you want to do something different with a different dark wizard, like Grindelwald became such a threat that it did, like other schools and areas got involved. Because that was countries. all about all over Europe, and that was, yeah. and that wasn't, that was Grindelwald trying to convince all of wizard kind that they needed to stand up for themselves and unite together mm -hmm. for the greater good uh, against the Muggles, right? So. That's much different than what Voldemort was doing. Voldemort wasn't really concerned at this point with the rest of Europe. No, nope. he was very specifically talking about uh, the UK or the UK and and Hogwarts in general. Hogwarts. He wanted to take over Hogwarts. He was going to go on to bigger and better things after that. Absolutely, but he had to get control first of the Ministry of Hogwarts. Next generation, uh, he needed way kids. more people. Maybe teach another generation of kids and then kill all the Muggles. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Silver screen psychopathy for five. The giants and spiders were barely in the last battle. Agreed. It's true. Yep. Uh, the last battle was done not very well, in my opinion. And the also, posts were cool, the, though. the death of uh, Voldemort is awful. Oh, the, yeah. the, awful. the entire, Absolutely. like, that, that is a complete misunderstanding of that entire scene and why it's important. One, you get all the explanation of everything that happened, sacrifice, the love, the love crux, like the like everything, including the Elder Wand and who's the master of the Elder Wand and all this shit. But most importantly, yes, Voldemort dies like any other man. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and that is the most important thing for his death. The body. Yep. For everyone to see his body laying there broken just like any other man. Like uh, Bellatrix too, and the the idea that he would just fucking disappear into nothing, people wouldn't be relieved. Like people wouldn't think he wouldn't come back. The same you thing know, it was, over again. They had the body, and they put the body in like a little closet right by yeah, the great far hall. away from everybody else. Um, let's see, Kenneth Stevens for ten bucks. Message retracted. Well, thank you anyway. Three beer thunder for ten. I want to see Harry's first class with Moody and Crouch, the teaching of the curses. I think they did a decent job of that in the movie. Yeah, yep. that was good with the spider too. Um, Hayden for 20. The Weasleys Molly experienced a lot of loss in the war. It makes sense for them to want a big family to love and protect, even inviting Harry in. They're tight knit, powerful, and not of that elitist mindset. The Weasleys are fucking awesome. Love the Weasleys. Did you see that meme where it's like, well, last year, last year I had seven because, you know, Fred died. Kids? Six. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Aiden Bergen for five was born in 2000. My mom read the entire series when she had me. That's cool. Hey, you're really yeah. young then. Yeah. Uh, hey. Hayden for 10. I was in fifth grade, 2001, when I got in the books. I wanted to read the book before the movie came out. Then the first movie came out, and I got told constantly I looked like Harry Potter, <laughs> like Daniel Radcliffe, apparently. Um, man, we got another 20 gift sub bomb wow. from Hayden. Holy wow. shit. Thank you very much, Hayden. That's a massive, massive one. It's a hundred bucks right there. So Thank this you. this is what it's like to be on a successful channel. This is exciting. 
Hey, it's quite an experience. It's gone. Thank you. Uh, you'll have Burn for five. Someday. I'm excited about the Aegon Targaryen movie and series. I love the fact that they're doing an Aegon's Conquest. I want to see that so fucking bad. I don't. I know you might not be super high on it, Gary, but. Uh, no, I would be if they like if they get the right if they're gonna do that. I am completely down because mm -hmm. that's because we'll get a lot more back. For one, we'll find out more about when's a winner in that than we would because uh, the book's never gonna finish. You know, just like House of the Dragon had a, ma a massive, massive yeah uh, when's a winner spoiler in it that yes. we thought was just something they made up for the fucking show, but no, it's a massive when's a winner spoiler, and we now know why Aegon conquered because yep. you know he. Ha it, I could go on all day. Sorry. Please but, do. Uh, uh, no, and, and I'm down with the Dunkin' Egg thing too. But it's just another unfinished. Just book. I just hope he finishes She Wolves. Um, but the Aegon thing. Let's just start a little earlier, and they could do that rush kind of like all the stuff in the first season that I, I said House of the Dragon did because you need to know the the beginning. The prologue has to have the Doom of Valeria. You have to, and oh, then God. like yeah, the dream, Danny the Dreamer, and oh, all I that am good completely stuff. down. Hell yeah. Uh, I think it'll be fun. Let's Hell see yeah. Balerion and the ba the Black Dread. Black Dread just oh, and just him melt Heron Hall. Oh. That would be fucking awesome. I agree. <laughs> Walls aren't high enough. Um, Bill Sotheby for ten. They cut out the Battle of Half Blood Prince. Can you imagine Peter Jackson? Oh, you read that one. Thank you, Gary. Um, Josh Z for ten. They need to have Hermione's anxiety, Ron's knowledge of the magical world, and pension for strategy. Ginny's adorable awkward transition into badass. Basically, mm -hmm. all the character traits in movies fucked up. Yes, as much as. The movies are respected and beloved. There's a lot of shit they fucked up in them. And yep. this is a chance to begin to make things right. I think that person put it perfectly too. Cause Ron, like we're all hairy. We're all new to this world. Mm -hmm. And Ron is our, what is it? Exposition. He's the yeah. one that tells us about everything, you know, mm -hmm. and they did him wrong. So I hope they do him yep. right this time. Um, let's see. Jennifer Lawrence is Harry. Duh, says WG. <laughs> Savior. Uh, uh, Ginger Adventure for five. After Lord of the Rings movies and books, I couldn't get excited for the movies and books, but maybe now. Hey, now is a better time than ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? As is Fat Cunty Brother for a buck ninety nine. Thank you, <laughs> Gary. May talk about Mr. Portrait. Highly right recommend Bioshock. Brilliant game. I uh, watched my son play it. It's Did really it's the got entire great, game. Uh, uh, no, but it's got great surround sound. That's some of the best surround you gotta sound. Gotta play that game. I have man. heard on a game. It is pretty, pretty good. That's an all timer right there. Yeah. Bioshock all timer. Really? Right. Yeah. The twist. Uh, <laughs> Bentley for five. Driver of Snape would be great. Also, as a Marine, so he has my respect. I knew he's at Camp Pendleton. Grew up in Fallbrook. Gary would know. Um. Yeah, Adam Driver's cool. I like Adam Driver. Did, did he? Was he at Camp Pendleton? Apparently. Or, or, yeah, oh, well, shit. I grew up right near that. He, he was a Marine, so yeah. yeah a yeah. Marine, yeah. Um, Ancient Mariner, remember, for five months, says Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, let's see. Ozzy Osbourne is Dumbledore. Why yeah. are we fucking around? That'd be cool. <laughs> oh, boy. Mad you eye. Be, you wouldn't be able to understand Mad a eye. word he was saying. <laughs> 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 Lily! It's weird how he can, <laughs> you, you can totally understand. He, he sounds in an album. Fine. You can you can hear every word he's saying when he's yep. singing. But when that guy, because I listen to Ozzy's Boneyard and they they do interviews, I can't understand a fucking word that guy. Can <laughs> no. Well, it's hard to understand somebody who drinks like a vat of wine and forty Percocets a day. You know, yeah, so yeah. Uh, Alex Jones as Dobby. <laughs> the chat. <laughs> Rita Skeeter. <laughs> Alex Jones is Dumbledore. Fuck it. Yeah, oh, yeah. That'd be We're gonna go Alex Jones. Yeah. Um, Peter Brady for five. He might be a little old for the role, but I think Henry Cavill would be good. Serious Black. Um, nah, I don't know. Don't He's know too clean. I made the joke, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I like that casting. Serious is a little like. He's a little wild and rough. Mm -hmm. and I can't Cavill honestly a, think of Henry, Henry Cavill, Cavill as any would be character. a good Godric Gryffindor. Like if they did. Yes. Because yes. yes. he's yeah. very classy and yeah. like. If, he's a if man. You're talking, if you're talking Marauders casting, I would rather have Henry Cavill as Ramus Lupin, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just I, I, He wouldn't be like my pick, but I think he would fit better that mm -hmm. type of. Um, his yeah, type of guess. softness. Uh, what would you not, pick for Peter like, No, good way of putting it. Proper. He's more. He's proper. proper. It is. Yeah. You just have to get less jacked. 
Yeah, that's he got that's robes. It doesn't matter. That shit don't matter. They got Luke, fucking robes. He was like like a good student. He was like Wait, the, he the, played the good guy of the Marauders. He was like mm. the straight A student or whatever. He would he he like he was he felt so uh, bad about them bullying Snape that he yes. would actually stop reading his book and listen or like look. Yeah, good job stopping the bullying there, Raymond. Wait, yeah, yeah. You really tried way to go, to. prefect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Buttcrack Media with five gift subs. Thank you so much, Mr. Buttcrack. Um, solo boxer for two showrunner Ronald D. Moore. I got no idea who the showrunner is going to be. Uh, nah, that wouldn't work. Um, who would be a good showrunner? I, I don't. I don't even have an answer for that, honestly. Yeah. Oh my god, I'd have to. Imagine if they bring in some Ryan Kendall, like, like somebody from like MCU or Star Wars that never wrote a script in their life, and they're like, here you go. God, you were uh, just saw. You just ran Willow. Come on over. Yeah, it's Jonathan magical. Kasdan. Jonathan Kasdan, come <laughs> yeah. on over. Uh, EB for a buck ninety nine, one nine nine. Thank you, Abaru for ten. Daniel Craig Dumbledore. Um, well, yeah. he would have the probably anal experience to play Dumbledore. <laughs> um, so, I mean, maybe, <laughs> but a little young, I think. Little oh. young. Three Beer Thunder for ten. If the show set in the nineties, I need Lee Jordan to wear a Jordan jersey in the common room. He probably would. And Harry asks, what shirt is that? And Lee tells us about MJ and the Bulls, and MJ is the GOAT. That'd be fucking funny. No, well, no. Dean and Thomas always has that soccer poster, and all the Wizarding kids are like, why doesn't it move? I don't get it. Like, what is soccer? Yeah. So that'd be cool. That's true. Yeah, and soccer um, sucks, so let's go to football. That's a better yeah. idea. And, or better basketball, basketball something. Over on Rumble, Deeds Minnesota for 10 bucks. Not a huge Harry Potter fan, but love listening to you nerds. Also for two bucks, I started the stream late. How many times have you read all the books? Um, oh. I would say for me, between listening and reading, I would say more than five, less than ten. But okay, that's that's my that's I, my I range. About this, I couldn't I, tell you about a, the same. I for a good six years, I, I read them every year. Oh wow! So I got to be honest, I didn't read them until 2018 on a work trip, and I read them straight through in a few weeks, which usually I'm a very slow reader and I've read them again since. So twice, twice now they're good. So good. I can't remember. I can Alice for five. Gary, says, Gary, How, you've, uh, probably closer to Ryan, but it's like more than uh, we'll say seven. Wow. Yeah. More yeah, than 10, I, 15. Yeah. Do you guys yeah. feel you oh, pick Deathly up Hollow, more? Deathly Hollows? I've read more than 10 times. Do you guys feel like you find new one. things every time you yes. read it? Yes. Every sure. time. I, I used to be one of those people who hated audiobooks. I was like, I'm going to read the book. It's so much better. Yeah. And then I listened to Stephen Fry and I was like, audiobooks Stephen are Fry, right? Wait a minute. Stephen Fry oh. reads them? I, Stephen I'm Fry. OG. Stephen Jim Fry, Dale. man. Jim Stephen Dale. Fry. Oh, Jim exactly. Dale. Come on. Jim Dale. Jim okay. Dale's great. I like Jim oh, Dale, but too. Stephen Fry's Fry is too, my but I, You know what? I associate him with Hitchhiker more than... Uh, even though Douglas Adams he does, reads he does really books good. better, I, yeah. I read, the, I listened to the Douglas book. Adams Hitchhiker, so I had him. Yeah, well, D Douglas Adams reading his own books is fucking hilarious. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good at. It. Yeah. I can Alice for five says for Dobby they should Steve cast Fry, Comics Division. Fist bump. Just the ears <laughs> and a little makeup, he'd have the perfect look. Oh I my agree. god! And then becomes Just a monthly supporter of Ron Rumble. Thank you, I can Alice. Appreciate that. Rumble. Um. Lazy Titan for five. Voldemort's death in the movies in the middle of trying to make 3D a thing purely for the 3D effect. I, I, I think I listened to Yates talking about it one time when he was talking about how they want, they thought it should be more personal and that like just personal. them. And I, I just hated it. It was the was opposite of what it should have done um, in with everybody surround, everybody that Harry loves, everybody that Harry fucking died for, everybody like, right next to them, everybody that already died for Harry. Yes. And Harry saying, I'm not going to let you hurt them anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, my protection is on these people. It's right. just you and me now, Tom. So like, come and on. it's him calling them Tom in front of these people and showing yeah. them like at calling the beginning of the series, right at the beginning of the series, you wouldn't even say vault. Like you, the, you couldn't say his name. And by the end, he's calling him Tom to his face. And like, yeah. it's just, yeah. it shows, the, it shows the people that he is not like you said, Gary, before, like there's a body. He's yeah. human. He's not a god. I think they missed out on that. 100%. Uh, big time. Um, the CJH Entertainment for Canadian 22 yeah, bucks CJH. sending a super chat because people on Twitter are losing their collective minds over my trolling tweets and think I hate Ryan. 
Yeah, I've seen some of that stuff out there. CJ Hates. I just try to stop paying too much It's okay. I hate Ryan too. Yeah. He's it's, a it's good popular team. opinion. Yeah. Uh, but hey, those guys are getting a lot of attention from people quote tweeting them to try to own them. So well, I'm sure that's what they want. I so. just like you to know, Ryan, I like you more than drunk. So, well, I've had you on my channel. That's yeah. Like right. drunk plays the nice guy, but then he's like, yeah, I'll totally come on your channel. Fucks me over every time. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Drunk Sorry. Be able to call Sorry. out. He's going <laughs> to profusely apologize to him to get him back on his channel. though. Totally. Dude, I'm simp. Don't worry. Um, Let's see. EB504 okay. for five. Scott, don't forget to pick a hot actress for the trolley witch. Ooh, okay. Because she has bat wings and cursed child and flaps like a uh, is... Amelia what? Clark. That is so fucking stupid. Dude. Oh my gosh. Why does she have triggered bat wings? Ryan. Uh, yeah, she's got wings and the, the trolley child. witch is like actually a like a, a defense mechanism for the Hogwarts yes. Express that's supposed to never let children off and decides they're going to kill them instead, basically. And so, like, the way that the trolley witch gets defeated is by, no one ever tried it before, jumping off the train. Good Wait job, Scorpius, or whatever the fuck it this was. This is that cursed dumb child book? Fucking... Like, yes. How yes. dumb? It, like, sh did she have it any involvement so in the bad. writing? I never she finished it. She stamped her name she on it. That, bad. On it. that was it. She didn't I never it. finished it. That's why, like, I, I stopped getting into Pottermore, too, because I started hating her fucking just constantly. It's worse than normal fan fiction. Yeah, it's like finish your damn encyclopedia. It would sell a gazillion yeah. copies, right? Uh, which I think she's probably completely forgotten about now. So <laughs> the problem, like, yeah, she Where? needs the definitive. This is the definitive canon. Stop tweaking it, I guess. Yeah. Um, EB for five. Scott, don't forget. To, oh, I just said that. Camille Zagadulin for one ninety nine. Robert Downey Jr. as Snape. Too old. Too well, old. Too vegan. Way too old. Too vegan. Yeah. Yes. God. So too old and too I, I'm about I was about to make comments on his looks but then I was like oh what if he's like sick or something or we, we don't know yeah he might be going around to chat like with Bozeman sick. he doesn't look yeah, right cause he's not looking good right now I personally just think he's just old old and vegan yeah old and vegan uh input latency for five hailing god bless peeps Jeremy sucks I'll have to listen back to this later but wanted to show support uh, don't know if I'll go to Matsuri, but headed to Texas around then. Forgot if y'all have anything planned there. Gary's definitely going to be there. Yeah. Porter Black's definitely going to be there. I'll I don't know if there. I'm going to be there yet. We'll see. Um, not set in stone. M Matsuri? Yeah. Uh, Drinker's going to be there, dude. Oof. That's going to yeah. be cool. When's that? Uh, uh, August. August sometime. August, yeah. Uh, right. Lids for 10 bucks says, do you think Snape's attitude towards Harry would have changed, if at all, if he was born uh, a girl that looked like like Lily instead of a boy that looked like James. Not that I want to gender swap. Just curious about Snape's character. Um, potentially, I, I, it was Even creepy. He yeah, hated creepy, James. Man. Yeah, he hated James for the way he got treated, and he hated James because he got the girl. Yep. So I think if if even I, if Harry looked like Lily at when he grew up, not just her eyes, but looked more like her and not Ariana. James, he would have been no, no, just but still, still a boy, but looks more like his mother's features. I think he would have been nicer to him but the the he looked exactly like james with different eyes so like he f i mean look at james was a dick he hated him so uh, he was a dick as a kid i mean he was like right. 15 then he grew up well the problem, but the problem is when when they say that and when like sirius and ramus talk about that it, it's tough it's easy to forget that james was only 21 years old when he died right oh so it's not like it's not like he had this long lifespan of fucking making right, right for things yeah. or like they were so far removed. And that's like, that's a point, but it, this yeah. is what we're talking about. Um, we're talking about somebody's experience with him and he was always a dick to him. So he doesn't, you know, he I fuck mean, him if he dies. Back, Excuse my language. But, no, Snape was, yeah. a, no, absolutely. Yeah. They were both fucking dicks to each other. Yeah. But it was, it was a bigger deal that James got the girl in my Yeah. yeah. So you think um, if she looked, if grudge. Harry looked more like his <laughs> mother's features, do you think? Do you think I don't, he would? It, I, I, that's tough to think about, uh, but probably you are right that he wouldn't have as much visceral hatred. Yeah. What, did you, what did you see, Gary? Uh, Elon just put out Canadian Broadcasting Corp says they're less than 70% government funded. So we corrected the label and it says CBC, 69% government funded media. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> that's CBC crazy. Good. That's oh, so good. God, that's good. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> Borg's sister for three. In my opinion, the show's already a disadvantage. There's no actor can perform the complexities to find Snape the way that Alan Rickman did. I'm worried they will warp canon and make it seem like Harry was always following social agendas. Uh, well, I mean, that's going to be the worry for everything now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
but that's what if, we'll if be Warner looking Brothers for. wants to flush all of their money that they have now dedicated for a for t- a decade and seven seasons down the toilet well they have rings of power to look at who they have been trolling i mean like warner brothers has been like in one of their advertisements they game trolled, of thrones yeah. yeah game of thrones they trolled the rings of power so I, so dope we have an example of of just like uh and listen tolkien fandom stronger than harry potter fandom they just are it is they're older they're smarter sorry but that's just the truth um and uh th- they have a great example so i think they would be really stupid to really lean into that i i listen you're gonna get one or two it, it depends on who it's gonna happen uh it might not necessarily ruin the entire series it really depends it really depends that now if they like i said if they you know if eddie izzard is dumbledore <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no. well, no. uh well, well yeah no. we got to be on top of looking for the news for wh- who the showrunner is who is the writing staff the casting that's like in the, that order we'll see the red flags when and, and tv they're going to be uh preview of my next video a little teaser here in tv they're going to be a lot more free than they are going to be in films there's there's i'll just say that hmm. there you go a more little free teaser to, to to yeah to to do things creatively than they will be in film in the very near future wow there you go. Um, now that is it. We're all caught up on super chats, caught up on everything. I didn't plan for this to go this long, but it's thank so you guys for being best. here. It was great. This is awesome. We definitely, I think, we need to do more Harry Potter stuff. Uh, Hell yeah! Yeah, uh, I think that's what we found out with this stream for sure. Yep. Um, Sporking, where can people find you? Thanks, man. Thank you very much for having me, Ryan. I hope I didn't embarrass you. Uh, you can see Pull yourself. Spork- You're good. I'm. I like that though. Uh, Sporky News Podcast on Twitter, YouTube. Please follow me on YouTube, but also Rumble. I'm. I think Rumble's the way to go. Uh, and I really appreciate being here. It was a lot of fun, guys. There you go, Quarter Black Garrett. What about you? Uh, you can find me on my channel where I play some video games, have fun over there, and more importantly, go watch Nerdronic because I edit some of those videos. And I like you to give me some feedback in the comment section. Good job. Well, how is it when you get confused with uh, Harry Chan? Always a good thing, right? I love that. I love going through the comments and they're like, oh, Perry Chan did a great job. I was like, I got <laughs> another one. There you go. I mean, your name's at the, uh, I, I it's, made it's a in point. It's in the description. To, I put it in every oh, description. I have to look at it. It's the video. Uh, I give these guys credit. They've so. been killing it. I could just thank say you. it's all thank me. You. <laughs> that's what i would do hey you do all the writing though so it's very important right you just make Let's stupid put that in air quotes yeah, i was about to say okay. you actually write no i do bullet uh, points, but uh, it's it's kind of i um, like i did bullet point my oh sorry go on yeah we'll talk no, you're later. good I was just Gary, my next Gary video. has a big way that he does the videos um and that's why listen he plans this shit out it's not a script but it's bullet points for what he wants to and wants to idea. talk about and that's why his videos are actually good yeah i really want to watch but, gary like do a whole process one day. It's Just sit pretty, in the corner and be like, wow. You need, need a whole day. You yeah. would need a whole day, a day and a half. It'd be pretty boring because a lot of it's staring out into space. Look, <laughs> yeah. there's a fly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, Blabs, where can people find you? So you guys can find me on Twitter at Blabbering C and then Kick, Twitch, and Instagram is all Blabbering Collector and I will drop some links below. Perfect. Thanks. There you go. And then I think everyone here probably knows where to find Gary, but what we got something big coming up soon, don't we, Gary? Oh, we do. I was like, I was like, what big thing? No, we have a a meetup. (laughs) We have a meetup coming up and I I leave a week from today to go to Vegas. I I could leave right now. I'm so excited. We've got so many plans. We got some team building stuff for just us, which is going to (laughs) be fun. Uh, and uh, we've got a big meetup on Wednesday, the 26th at the Millennium Fandom Bar. And you better RSVP pretty quick because we are very close to having to cap it. I'm pretty sure well, we're going to be above tonight. the limits. Yeah, we're we're already above like probably some limits. You know. We'll be all right. We'll be fine. Yeah. We'll be fine. But um, yeah, if uh, RSVP, it's uh, 7 p.m. at the Millennium Fandom Bar. Uh, I was saying six, but it's seven. So uh, catch us there. And Chrissy's show will be like a second meetup, basically the following evening. And who who knows what uh, other shenanigans we'll get into? But uh, I can't wait to hang out with my with all my friends. It's gonna be great. 
Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Um, Sir Reefer, uh, a top tier channel member, says thank you guys for all you do. I genuinely hope HBO doesn't mess with Harry Potter and just makes a good TV show. That's what we're all hoping for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I love. Probably Sir won't Reefer. happen, but right now we have hope. Yeah, uh, we have hope. Um, Hayden for twenty bucks. If they try to do something like Sonic, we just gotta bully them and make them fix it. We did it once. We can do it again. Yeah. We can make it right. If if there's an open showrunner. And there's another small example out there of like if they choose to learn, there there have been lessons over the last six months. Uh, woke Hollywood is still woke Hollywood, and it still sucks. But there have been very like Super Mario Brothers, mm -hmm. to, like I said earlier, and Star Trek Picard. Star Trek Picard's uh, season three specifically is absolutely flipping all that shit on its head and, so and making something good. Uh, so it's possible. They have examples. It's up to them. Um, Camille Zagulin for five. Timothy Chalamet is young, serious black. Ewan McGregor is Dumbledore. People are all over the Ewan McGregor Dumbledore one. So it's not bad. It's not I, a bad I, one. Yeah, you can do one. it. Um, yeah, for sure. We do have, just so you guys know, there is the Geeks and Gamers Mario Kart Monday night stream going on right now. I set up an auto direct, so it should have you. You know, as soon as I end this stream, it's going to, like, have you hit something. You can go right over there. If you don't see that, you can just go to Geeks and Gamers uh, okay. channel and see yeah. that as well. But, hey, big thank you to all these guys on the panel for coming and doing the stream. This is fucking Thanks, fun chat. shit. So yeah, chat. thank you, chat, for showing up. We had a lot of people in here. And uh, you never know, we may end up doing this again. Uh, we will talk to all you Potterheads later. Bye, everybody. See ya. Peace.